One, two, check, one, two, three. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to the rise of UK rap. My name is DJ Longers, your co-host and DJ. Just wanted to give you a warm, hearty welcome. 
We've got a big show for you today. A very, very, very big show for you today. Giving the full 360 on the music business. Access all areas. We are your AAA pass to the music industry. Once again, like I was saying, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Access All Areas, and we're going to start it off just like this. Uh, put me on a D. On a D, boy. I want to fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. In the sheets, boy. Celebrating the, the rise of UK rap. Put me on your bed, like, yeah, it's a bad girl, so we thought you could arrest this. Match me, like, we in a game of Tetris. Fuck that, I'm the realest and the best is. Take the thingy out the boot. You gotta run, put the thingy in my shoe. Yeah, yeah. On and on, like I'm going to the I got the thingy in my waistline. Can't stop, won't stop, I can't waste time. Money on my mind, I gotta make mine. Trippy on the beat and on the baseline. Uh, I said, put me on the beat. On the beat. You wanna fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. Get freaky, you get boy. me everything I want, all on the beat. Yeah. You come again and again, you on repeat, like. Uh, put me on the beat. You wanna fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. You give me everything I want, all on the beat. Uh, you come again and again, you on repeat, like. Uh, like I said, we got a great show for you today. I wanna fuck Three amazing beat. artists that's going to entertain you real good. Yeah. An amazing panel and amazing subjects to talk about. They could probably get controversial in certain places, but still, you know how it goes. It's all based on opinion, isn't it? In it, mate. Once again, my name is DJ Longers, and welcome, welcome to AAA, aka Access All Areas, your AAA pass to the music industry. Can get this going, let's go. The D, J, so the gal them love me. I don't know for the pagan use of a up this pole for a man Kentucky. I love people. We got a lot of music to play today. A lot of music to play today, all based around the UK. So the gal them love me. Had a know for the pagan use of a up this pole for a man Kentucky. My nigga S R don't cross club. Missy slap the old dots and tear man's wig. He in the band door trying to make this dog go Paris on store where ain't no dish. For those who don't know, UK are doing things worldwide right about now. I used to make peace from a black. Right about now, it's a worldwide invasion. Let's do this. Make your RP stop. Run a man down, too shanks, just be no team, ten toes on a pagan block. The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. I'm sweet when I fly them packs, no LSD thing when I OT bop. I love beef and I love get money. I got racks and I got bare honeys. No cap. It's our time, man. It's our time. It's definitely our time. Once again, I'm saying it again. I'm saying it bare face. The UK are taking over the world musically. I got racks and I got bare honeys. No cap, rule bad man thing. Turn my man doppy, shop gun, but I call it brocky. In the streets, so the gal them love me. Had a no for the pagan use of a up this pole for a man Kentucky. I got beef in the streets like another thing I'm gonna tell you. This this uh showcase here, this platform right here, what we do is we bring on artists on stage that are going to be world beaters. I'm telling you that from now. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is AAA, AKA Access All Areas, your AAA pass to the music industry. My name is DJ Longers, AKA your co host, DJ. Let's do this. I walk through the door, through the door. they looking at me. Uh, I didn't do anything, I swear it ain't me. They point on my G, they ask me, did you see? DJ Longers, DJ Longers, what do you mean? We ain't finessing and nobody's chessing. I'm here with my team. She might be yours, but she leaving with me. And please tell me why you ain't wasting my time. The shit isn't free. Why? Why? Oh, my brother stepping up so clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We about to make this city's lean. This city's lean. This city's lean. We about to make this city's lean. Business on my face, it's the dream. It's the dream. I'm leaving the donuts in my sleeve If we driving and we tearing 
We're calling this melody crap. We do things in all different styles, in our own accents as well. We kick down the door. They looking at me. I didn't do anything. I swear it ain't me. They point on my G. They ask me, did you see? He didn't do anything. We don't try to believe. I remember one time the UK used to trap in uh, American yeah. accents. I ain't talking or chatting. We don't do that no more. Call you back while I'm landing. DJ Long. DJ Long. DJ Long. DJ Long. DJ Long. My main thing is a batting. Matting. Paycheck looking handsome. Still paid all my taxes. Low key, but I'm acting. DJ Long. Me and George on the same thing. Yeah. Big bank, you see my savings. Yeah. New girl make Kim K look Kaylin. Good shape, buddy, y'all 10 10 ratings. My looks, money, I'm money, I'm matching. Patching, do we stay patting? You man are actors, acting. Bare tools, no one can't show no action. Line up your fam and the man, them trying to put mums in a new house and a new wagon. She don't even drive, but I get a driver. I can make that happen. I ain't talking or chatting. What's up, what's up? Call you back when I'm landing. What's happening? Trying to put the man in mansions. mansions. Keep my family packed. Warming you up for when the actual live acts come on stage. Matching. 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 She like the way man move, the way man lean, the way man rock uh-huh. I like the way y'all wind, the way y'all tick, the way y'all talk Man be come to the crib for the D, man give it this part, them fuck Little niggas don't talk about riding, man sliding, you don't wanna get caught She like the way man move, the way man lean, the way man rock I like the way y'all wind, the way y'all tick, the way y'all talk Man be come to the crib for the D, man give it this part, them fuck Little niggas don't talk about riding, man sliding, you don't wanna get caught Little nigga love riding, hella smoke in a ride, no cap, got a bus, this whack to the gun, go silent. Do jewels for the gang, who day, no rap, cat team, can't talk to the trident. For my bros, I'll take that risk, trying to leave man flat to the max like ironing. Wind down low, then shake it, shake it, baby, let me hear that clap. Mega wanna hold this stallion, now got a swimming in my drip like taps. Sure you wanna fuck for the Birkin, twerk that ass, let me throw some racks. I like the wig, y'all tick, y'all talk in a rave, let her hold my mash. Like I said, this is AAA access, all areas, the AAA pass to the music industry. And like I said before, I'm so glad that we can be ourselves nowadays. Before, we used to rap in American accents like we are American. Now we have our own identity and we're doing great things worldwide. So if you just tuned in, this is AAA, AKA Access All Areas. And today's one is about the rise of UK rap. Okay, it's about that time. It's about that time when we bring our first act onto the stage. So let's do this. Access All Areas New Artist Showcase. We are the home of new UK music. The next artist to perform on the AAA stage is... Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a virtual round of applause for the one they call Woolly? Check, check, yeah. How's it going? Hope you're all good. Yeah. Shout out. Access all areas. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This one here is called a round of the mixtape. These beats ain't mine. It's in the making, it's pending, it's pending. Yeah. Look. Trying to mash in four ways, be a jack of all trades. Two, I'm trying to get paid. Man, them niggas few days in the trap. Made a bag in like about four hours. So I thought, fuck it, might as well stay a few days. And when the phone stops ringing, no need to get vexed. I just send another text, and the nitty stay calling. It's what I had to do. Didn't matter about my mood. Like I own a restaurant, trying to move this food. <laughs> like it's got a sell by date. Like I'm trying to sell by eighth And these niggas know me I'm forever on the wave Man, these niggas kind of sell by late Told these niggas clean up But they didn't want to listen Room messy, so I stay trapping in the kitchen 
Look, you think it's crazy how I'm living? Look, it's kind of crazy what I've been in They're like, Wooly, where you been? I've been around Dry looking for that cream, I'm around Money be the subject and I'm around Not much, real niggas left, that's around Humble, but you know we keep them things around Dentures, got a couple teeth to fling around Oh no, two's back, yes I'm around Oh no, Willie's back, yes I'm around oh, It was me, F.E. in the whip Fed stop the whip Them times had the spin and never had the clip Got caught, went prison, moved around a bit Came out, check cats, moved the bag of fish Hit the booth like, whoa, kinda bad at this Told him give me any beat, man I damage it Got your swap her for a bad bitch Sat down, heard the game and got sad a bit Like what's this game on? Mr. Any beat, I'ma rain on Niggas tryna dash, I get my dame on Truth is, time's running out so Right now it's game on So you know I got my game on Told my cousin, he said I'm always changing numbers Told him this the main one Knowing I'ma change up Cause in life right now I ain't changing Huh? Man I'm trying to get that change They're like Willy where you been? I've been around Dry looking for that cream, I'm around Money be the subject that I'm around Not much, real niggas left, that's around Humble, but you know we keep them things around Dentures, got a couple teeth to fling around Oh no, shit, Willie's back, he's around Oh no, two's back, yes, I'm around oh. Yeah He's good That one there was called around Off of the T-Band mixtape, these beats ain't mine. You good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winners. Look. Oh. On that money like I don't want nothing else Mood low, got me feeling by myself Feed low like the battery on the scales I was looking cells Wasn't chilling on the block when man was doing up Chappelle Gonna said it best, these men are pointing fingers doing nails And if it isn't that, men are pointing fingers at themselves Smoking Philly then I call, damn it's chilly in this world Got my niggas in them jails, sending letters to his girl and She ripping open envelopes like money's in the mail There ain't no money in the mail, it's a VO Judge gave him 10 for the white teeth, he go Back to rap flows, mine not least hope Complain about the hustle, but love it when the pee comes Guess it's what I do for me to see funds At first seem fun, trying to get that fast cake Early morning nigga, I don't start late Street sports, yeah I used to partake Certain things I've seen and I can't say Thing in that class A Life weren't saddy oh, but it was moving money Wasn't always sweet but I swear I had them hard days Humble when I'm grown now Thinking about them dark days In prison thinking about the dark phase Everybody's boiling kettles No one's making latte Rent due pilo Gotta get that money can't sleep bro Looking at the bailiffs through the peephole Mum told us stay quiet Swear around the house I had to sneak though Had to be a wolf follow sheep no I'm the type to kill a sheep and make myself a neat coat Wooly I'm a neat goat Oh, feeling high, oh man I'm feeling high We a bird doing his and hers, feeling fly Fingers crossed behind my back, saying swear I don't own her Till the boy tries to see the sweets fly Get cool, I heard it's eat time huh. Got myself a dinner date, tea time Cup and face, you won't see mine Said he's on the wave, so we took him to the seaside Now a few minutes niggas, yeah, they'll be on some beef brand Get hit, then we hit him on the rewind See feds, then they blowing like some C5 In the whip, no plates, no V5 Get caught, no, man ain't trying to see time Meanwhile it's funny cause these niggas rocking rollies but They ain't trying to see time Got them R&B niggas all sweating on some key vibe Oh, yeah Shout out DJ Longest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the T-Bam intro. Guy mad ape, moving with gorillas on gorilla moves. Life was real sticky like gorilla glue. Went from rogue cunch to standing in them dinner queues to back of rogue cunch. I was flinging two and two doing me when I want. I don't need no shit to be improved. Forever trying to win, but even winners lose. Hard times, yeah, there been a few. Finish them before they finish you. Beef teeth drop, cause you couldn't choose. Phone charger, take a ticket fares. Grinding in my classics, cause I wanted a couple modern pairs. They 
Kept asking for extra but the nitty already got his share grew Quiet and humble you would think I wasn't even there Bars grizzly but who the fuck wrote the bear Can't take a man for Yogi I'm a bigger bear No one ain't giving give a take so nigga give it here Told me go figure so I did up getting figures here Grew don't talk if you don't know shit Trying to get that bread like hove is Trying to get ahead so I throw bits Trying to get them dead so I wrote this I'm keeping business on the low man These niggas show biz in life I made progress Right now I'm low risk but still got a miss The hit and don't miss But I'm chilly cold yes Better get your cold ass Funny cause if it isn't money fam I go deaf Hard headed any beat I'm racks Bar ready, any beat I'm nice, leave a whole mess And if it was a word, I'm the caucus Bars I'll be cooking, I'm a cook, I'm a whole chef Find my one it all, whole thing nigga, no less Bars chili cold, yes, Wooly I'm the coldest Grown trying to show shit, grew now I show less Grown trying to show shit, but grown now I show less Yes, grown now, Wooly I'm grown now Why to you Wooly, call me Wooly cause my hometown And if you didn't know, guess you know now Where niggas throw rounds, have them ducking like in Tekken When you play and hold down, grown now yeah, Wooly grow now Why to you Wooly, call me Wooly Cause my hometown And if you didn't know, fam you know now Get Have been ducking like a Tekken When you play in the whole town Wow Yeah Jeez Wow yeah. Wooly What's good bruv? Come down and come talk to me, bro. I'm just stand right here in front of the, uh, the, the the board and stuff. Yeah, bro. I'm come sweating on, bro. like I'm stole something. Sweat I hate like you. I don't know what you stole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How good, you doing, bro? Good. I'm good, you know. Yeah? I'm good, I'm good. I'm it's good, good to good. see you, man. It's good to Same, see you up man. there with the stage and everything. Bro, I haven't done it for over a year. So I hate thank you. Thank you for having me. And you know what the like, funny yeah. thing about it is everybody's saying the same. Even in Soundcheck, it's like, oh, my word, I haven't done this for over a year and blah, this blah, blah. So it's good to be back in the mix, isn't it? crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, man. So, bruv, where are you from? Woolly, South London. Oh, South as, as London. when you say Woolly, do you mean uh, Woolwich? Wo- Woolworth Road. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't get twisted, though, because Woolwich, they say Woolly as well, but... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you kept saying Woolly, I, I thought to myself, you about Woolwich or nah, somewhere else? No, 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 no. Woolworth Road, Elephant yeah? Castle, Peckham. Yeah, yeah, Campbell yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, yeah. now, you... All right. Nowadays, you've got a lot of people who come with the whole... Uh, the drill flow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You had this whole different type of flow that is very mis- reminiscent of like some of the New York cats and stuff like that. You know what I mean, yeah, is that where your flows come from? Yeah, yeah. that's what I grew up listening to. I know it will probably be cliche now because them like had the, the verses the other day. Oh, yeah, I know. Big I know. set, yes. A block, you know, yes. like, brother, I grew up on Styles, grew up on Jada Kiss, especially because he does different flows. Yeah. And, Bruv, yeah, yeah. D-block, 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 D-block. Yeah, so, man. now, when we were talking about the, the UK artists who are um, big in the game at the moment, mm. who would you say is the guys that you look up to? Well, obviously, the guys from ENDS, like uh, Gigs. Yep. I would say Gigs and uh, Buck. Buck, yep. what they're doing right now. Oh, yeah, I heard Buck used to be, he used yeah, to be a rapper. Used to be well, a he's rapper a spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to do, like, Until he decided and say, boy, I'm making yeah. enough money for managing <laughs> gigs. So, you know what I mean? Just about just, back, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yeah, so... Yeah, I was on a cut like one, one or two mixtapes from Woolly like then back then when I was young. But yeah, it's people from my area really, to be honest. Yeah. But I do, I am listening to a lot of UK rap, um, not so much the drill stuff. Yes, I do listen to drill, but it's mostly rap, like I said. So when you're talking about UK, you listen to a lot of UK rap. Yeah. Who would you say you listen to nowadays? Well, um, play on the way here. I was listening to Suspect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, on the mm. way here, listening to Sus. Suspect's cold. Yeah, yes. yeah, Suspect. I was listening to Sus. Gigs, obviously, yes. yeah, man. Ambush. Yes, Ambush, Ambush is cold. Well. Yes. Like rinsing that mixtape as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. Was so, all right. So before before we go back into the, the panelist side of things, um, I want you to plug yourself, bro, so people know where they can get your mixtape, yeah. where they can get to know more about you, your socials, everything. So let's help. Uh, no worries. Yeah. It's Y2. This is my Instagram. So it's YTWO underscore Wooly. So that's W. So it's YTWO underscore Wooly. Wooly, yeah. So W O O L Y. Certain people put two L's, etc. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? So it's, yeah, so it's the same with Twitter as well. Yeah. And mixtape, that's in pending. Like basically, it's pending at the moment. Okay. So yeah, still in the writing. So, so what about your last mixtape that you put out? Last mixtape, like. That was years ago, probably okay, years cool. ago. Yeah, yeah. so I'm in, the, I'm in the process of making the mixtape now. Have you got a name for it? Um, these beats ain't mine. Okay, that's yeah, the one you're yeah, doing. Oh, so basically, now, everything yeah. we're getting right now are your fresh stuff. Oh, fresh stuff. Okay, basically. wicked, fresh, wicked. Yeah, you so you're hearing them so. exclusive yeah. right here. This is <laughs> fresh saying. stuff that's going to be on the actual mixtape. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
Yeah, man. That, like mixtapes coming out soon. Hopefully by the end of the year. Yeah. And yeah, YouTube. Just type in Y2 Wooly and you'll see me. How many songs have you actually got finished for the actual mixtape at the moment? About eight. Okay. Eight, and I wanna I wanna make it like a fifteen tune. Wicked. Type of mixtape. Yeah, like Wicked. old school days, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please have a virtual round of applause for the one and only Wooly? <laughs> Thank you, bro. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know it's that time, right? Where we have this conversation, this big conversation about the rise of UK rap. Let's go. It's time to drop knowledge. Your Access All Areas panel begins now. Moderated by your AAA resident, Jay McGregor. What up, Jay? What up, Jay? What is good, Mummy? Thank you, Priscilla, again for that amazing performance today. It's all good. The mic at the moment. Not quite. Yeah? Okay, not quite clear from, from what I can hear. Yeah? Hello. Okay. You guys can hear it properly? All right, that's cool. It's a, if I can't, you can. That's all right. That's right. That's right. So I hope everyone can hear me. We're going to miss out on all the gems that we got going on. But it wouldn't be a live stream without some technical issues, would it? We're still in 2021. Hopefully 2022. Soon come. Soon come. Yeah. Yeah. Less, less than six months ago. It's your time, darling. Take over the show. Anyway, anyway hello, hello. My name is Jamie Regger, and I'm going to be moderating the panel today on the rise of UK rap. And you know we give you the AAA access into the music industry, and we've got a whole host of panellists, some that are on the stage with me, and some that are joining us via Zoom to come and talk about the rise of UK rap from their experiences. When I'm saying we've got people that are in the radio industry, that are artists themselves, they're in the management side, the label side, the PR side, they're coming at you from every single angle and I'm gonna introduce them. So on the stage with me, we have got Black Twang, UK rap and R&B legend and producer, give us a wave. Welcome, welcome. We've got Leisha, UK rapper and BBC The Rap Game UK finalist. Hello to you. We've got with them head of Tired Impact, where we are today and hip-hop pioneers Green Jade. We've got Scully, music and radio exec at No Signal Radio. And we've also got Sarah Harrison, Rinse FM DJ and presenter. Now joining us on the Zoom, we've got Miss C Brown, a VJ, DJ, international events organizer, Tapes UK founder, Synced In and ATM lecturer. I don't think there's anything that this woman doesn't do, which is absolutely amazing. We have got poet, presenter and creator, you know from Yo MTV Raps as well, hello. We've also got King Tut, music producer and ACM mentor. DJ Bigos, DJ and co-founder of Music PR Sync In. And Abby Lefadeju, lawyer and head of legal and business affairs at Ninja Tune. Hello to you all on the Zoom. I hope you're all well. We all good? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Good, man. Everything's yeah. sweet. Yeah. Well, we're here to talk about the rise of UK rap. So first of all, I'm going to kick it off and ask everybody to just describe their relationship to UK rap. You know, what is your connection? So I'm going to start on stage and then head to my Zoom. So coming from you, Leisha, you've come off one of the biggest UK rap TV shows. Congratulations for becoming a finalist on that. Thank festival. you. <laughs> Pretty obvious, but let's go back to the beginning. What is your relationship with UK rap? So with UK rap, I grew up when grime was basically coming out. It was hot. I loved it. I jumped on it myself. And then my style has just kind of elevated and been a mix of blend of all the different kind of music that's been coming out of the UK, a little bit of rap, a little bit of garage and kind of just creating my own sound. And then as my, you know, time has progressed, I ended up on one of the biggest shows. So yeah, that's my connection. Lovely. And over to you, Scully. We've all been entertained during lockdown and beyond that with the rise of No Signal. So what is your kind of connection? Similarly to what Leisha was saying, I think UK rap is amazing because we've watched Grime do what it did in this country and obviously it still exists today. Like you can listen to new Kanye and you're like, well, that beat sounds like Grime, but UK rap is it's kind of in its infancy. Like we've watched it grow and obviously it's had moments for like the last let's say 30 years, but it's really becoming its own staple genre and its own style. And we have so many different types of UK rap. It just, it's just amazing to see. And I love to like broadcast it, talk about it, present on it. It's, it's it. Well, we love to see it. Over to you, DJ Sarah Harrison. What is your connection to UK rap? So it's been a, a bit of an enigma for me, actually, because I migrated to this country when I was 12. So my exposure to UK rap was very minimal until I actually started to 
immerse myself in the culture, even just be familiar with the language. So, you know, US rap was traditionally the most global sort of rap genre that anyone in the world would be, um, would have access to. So my entry point, I would say to UK rap was Garage. Um, and I guess that was the melodic element to it. Sort of the pop crossover, which I started um, being involved in, in at school. Um, and then through So Solid Crew, that's kind of when I became exposed to, to the radio culture here in the UK through Bang Radio, which is now called The Beat. Then went into, um, you know, internet radio, like radar radio, which again, I feel like the radio culture here in the UK has exposed so many subgenres of rap. Um, so I think, yeah, that was, a, that was the entry point. And then finding myself on Rinse FM, again, one of a very pioneering FM radio station uh, was just, yeah, it's, it's just a, a UK rap sort of amalgamation altogether. I love that. A mixed journey so far, but lots of crossovers. Over to Black Twang, legend. <laughs> yeah, um, my relationship with UK hip hop, as we call it, um, is actually predates everything that everyone else has said so far. And um, my one basically started from being a kid in South London, listening to Tipper Irie, even if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them UK rap because they were doing reggae, but they were rapping in a London accent. You understand? Yeah. And so you had your, you had London Posse, Demon Boys, Hijack, a lot of names you guys need to go and do your Googles on. But um, <laughs> that's what got me into it. So we had MCD and um, just a whole movement. And this was around like late 80s, early 90s. And um, there was a really, really thriving scene. We had record labels. I mean, sorry, record, record shops that kids would meet at. There was Covent Garden. There was like Deal Real, Carnaby Street. Like all them places where we all used to go ciphering, where we were buying records, where we were digging for crates and whatever. And that's how I got into the whole music scene myself. And um, yeah, I, I started making music around that same time. And that's when we were kind of championing that whole UK sound to say, we're not going to rap like Americans anymore. We're going to do, we're going to, we're going to rap the way we chat. We're going to tell our own stories. We're going to talk about where we're from. And that, that's really it. I feel like I'm about to get some, a big, big history lesson. I feel, like I'm, going to, I feel like I'm going to get schooled today. I'm, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Cause I mean, we hear a lot of stories like, you know, no disrespect to Scully. Cause he was saying, you know, it's in his infancy now. It's been in its infancy for a very long time. Mm. Like we've had moments where it's been like on what you what you consider mainstream hip hop, like yeah. mainstream pop charts and whatever, whatever. The good thing now though, and where he's right, is that we now have a real movement of like where kids don't even listen to anything else but UK rap. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say to you? So in a way, that's kind of what I'm proud of. And, and I'm kind of happy to be to say to call myself a trailblazer as one of the ones that really championed in it, championed it and you know, go it to where it is now. Look at you smiling. It's so sick. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm ready I'm, to get into it. I'm so proud I'm of it. Like, you know what I mean? So, yeah. As you should be. And Wisdom, you see it from both aspects, you know, guiding the next generation of musicians coming in and then your own experience of being in, you know, hip hop and rap group Green Jade. Yeah. So I started, um, I remember in my first year of secondary school, 1990, someone gave me a um, NWA tape and that was the first kind of introduction I'd had to it and um, um, Digital Underground. And that got me into hip hop. I then started rhyming when I was about 14 um, and joined Green Jade. Um, and that, at that point in time, UK hip hop was very a very South London thing and very niche. Mm -hmm. um, partially because Trace FM didn't really exist on the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. um, so it was mainly in South and it was Trace that was playing a lot of the music. Yeah. So as a result, that's how we kind of got into it in the mid 90s. It wasn't until the late 90s that hip hop kind of became this thing that was on radio and stuff like that. And, and, and at that time, the only thing that was on radio really was US hip hop. It was really, really difficult to get through, even with the 279s and the Westwoods here, to be able to get UK artists on. So that was kind of the time that, you know, Twang would have been, Twang was destroying the place and really leading things forward for the rest of us, uh, kind of coming behind him. People like, you know, Green Jay, 57th Dynasty, um, At The Ville, a lot, of, a lot of those crews. So we did have this hip hop thing. We were trying to develop it. It was much more influenced by the US. Yeah. And our standard was the US. So we were lyrically, it wasn't necessarily we were trying to copy the American sound, but we lyrically wanted to be on par with them and have our production at that kind of level. Because um, that was actually really quite difficult to achieve. 
Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of when my love for it started and 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 kind of birthed out of that. And then going on, I think Green Jay did four albums. We toured around the UK and US and various other bits and pieces. But that all came from sort mm -hmm. of 1990s and like like Twine was saying, I seeing how it's now developed mm -hmm. into the predominant sound where you will hear more you. K based hip hop on radio than you will US is something that 30, 20 years ago we didn't even think was possible. Wild. Well, do you know what? As I said, we're going to get into all of that. This is just the iceberg. This is what I mean, AAA, access all areas, when I mean it, because this is not the kind of stuff that we're going to find on just an, an, any old ordinary Instagram Live, any old ordinary QA. So, right here, right now, we're going to bring it over together. But don't forget, I've forgotten about my Zoom crew. I haven't forgot you. Let's start. We're at DJ Big O's. What is your connection to UK rap and the rise of it? Okay, so I think I was a fan before I got involved, but um, I was a baseline DJ for rap from around 2007. Then I jumped onto Pirate Radio around 2010. Baseline was kind of falling in popularity and I liked too many genres of music to just play baseline on radio. So. At that time, um, I kind of looked up to Rasko Army because he was proper champion in the homegrown stuff kind of thing, and no one wasn't really doing it in my city, I felt like, properly. So that's when I jumped on Radio 2010 and I just started pushing UK hip-hop and UK grime and just, like, just strictly. I didn't, I didn't I didn't play no US on my show. Like, it was two hours of UK music, and that's how I got involved very committed to the course you've been doing it for the uk you've been championing it of course <laughs> it's only right i feel like someone needs to in it like i feel like um there was a lot of djs around my time that were baseline djs and they when they made their transition they decided to go like some went to funky or some turn into generic djs and just wanted to play all the chart bangers but i had too many people around me that was making good music and it wasn't getting heard do you know what I mean? So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to sacrifice and I'm just going to do this. And yeah, it, 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 it helped. It paid off still. So. Oh, it did. Well, big up to you, man, especially with that. Over to you, Missy Brown. You've seen it from like the event side, the PR side, the music side, the DJ side. I don't know if there's anything that I said earlier that you can't do. So what is your connection to it, would you say? So I grew up listening to hip hop just, you know, generally. And um, I remember listening to like a, a lot of London Pussy and Demon Boys and, you know, the really early stuff. So I saw it from those stages and especially being from Brum as well, being around pioneers like Maurice Dauta, MSI and Asylum. So I got to see it from the Brum side also. And then when I started to go on pirate radio, this was around 2003, there was like a, a big thing around UK hip hop at that time. So I played a lot of it on my show. And then there was like a, a big spike in Birmingham hip hop as well. And a lot of artists were starting to take on their own kind of style and rap in their Brum accents. So we had like whole shows dedicated around that time to Brum hip hop, and I was a big part of that. So I really got to, I guess, um, embed myself in the culture within Birmingham. And a lot of um, pirate DJs that were around me at that time as well had the same kind of, you know, experience being really embedded within the Birmingham scene and within the Birmingham culture. And so, yeah, I've pretty much been with it from, you know, from early out. But I would say from about like 2003 is when I started like properly engaging with it and be more embedded in it and then started to do in like um, the showcases as well. And the, the international showcases like the stuff for A3C and South by Southwest and putting UK artists on those stages, you know, specifically. So um, that was always a big thing for me, making sure that I'm able to represent the UK in different ways and also highlight the stuff that's going on in Birmingham as well. So that's been my thing. I love that you're bringing both of those together and that we're finding out about different places in the UK and those impacts too, because it all kind of collaborates together to the rise of UK rap. Now over to you, Poet, you're getting up close and personal with a lot of these artists that are coming through as well as deep connections of your own. Can you elaborate on that? 
Um, yeah. <clears throat> when it comes to like hip um, hip hop, UK rap, and like how I guess I got involved, is the one thing that I think people maybe don't speak about enough is the fact that it's something that derives from culture. So some people are a part of it by default, like just being in the estate. Like you just have people in certain areas that are just rapping and you just happen to be around. So that's my entry point to it. Like watching Black Twang, um, So Rotten on like MTV base and then being like, how has he got there? And then like going into the youth club in the estate and then like saying, yo, there's a brother on TV, like rapping with an English accent, brothers, we can do this. So like, it's little things like that. And then, I don't know, I remember when Skepta had a song with Joel Santana and it was like 2006. So like my entry point is just seeing the culture of it within my area of Tottenham. And like there was loads of local rappers from like Tiverton. So like Tiverton was known for having rappers, not so much grime. So like right Calibar, um, like them guys were just rapping their ass off. And I used to like listen to like learn from my mixtape and I was on to the rap because it was like a proper, it was so, so special. And then when grime was developing and it was growing, the movement were like one part of grime that still did a lot of rap and people don't really give them a lot of credit for it. So Scorcher, Wretch, Getz, Devlin, like Merckx, and they were all rapping as well. But because grime was the culture that was quite prominent, tracksuits and so on and so forth, people kind of tend to like bypass it a little bit, but they were definitely people that were immersing themselves in UK rap as well. So, um, and I was consistently such a fan of it, such a fan of what it was and how people's tales from the streets came into music that, yeah, like I just wanted to be a part of it any way I could. So I made like loads of shows when I was younger. I think the one that kind of got me a little bit to work with a lot of the people I work today was a show called That's A Rap. And it was like my goal to literally speak to a top artist. Cause I love the way Channel U was where you could have like Kano next to Kanye West. So I was like, imagine that was in a show format where you speak to a massive artist um, from rap and then have like a, a cypher at the end with like loads of artists that are not so big. So I remember like having a show and I'm speaking to Nas and one of it. And then I've got like Avelino, who was Bobby Brown at the time doing the cypher. So it's just like, I was so happy to contribute in some capacity where you've got a load of unknown individuals at the time who didn't have an entry point onto Grind Daily or to SB and me saying, do you know what? Like it may not be the biggest part in the world, but like come and try and show your showcase your talent here. So, um, and that was up to like 2013, 14. And then obviously I don't like the MTV stuff after that. So yeah, I was a massive, massive fan of UK rap, man. Like massive fan. It's dope to hear your entry point and the fact that you've also brought in culture. So that's a huge part of UK rap and what it is today. So yeah, looking forward to getting into a bit of that. Abby Luther Deju, can you come to us from, you know, your legal and business perspective of UK rap? Um, yeah, it's... Um... It's interesting because I've seen that most of, of the people obviously doing um, UK rap are sort of people of colour, you know, black music and, and stuff like that. Um, and I've not seen, you know, many people of colour on the business side when it comes to legal and business affairs. And it's an area I really wanted to get in to, to, to make that difference and to inspire people to get in, in those positions where you don't always have to be the rapper, you can actually be the business person, the one doing the deals, you know? And I guess there was a turning point um, when I met Hedy Wan and, and I did his, his um, publishing and recording deal uh, before working at Ninja when I was, you know, working with Russell's, which is a, a media and entertainment law firm in the city. So that was a turning point for me where I, I never knew that rappers could get, you know, such, such, um, you know, good deals and, and good positions and stuff like that. Um, but the only thing I thought is that if, if Hedy, if I didn't meet Hedy or if we didn't meet each other at that particular point in time back in 2018, then, you know, would his deal have gone the way, you know, it did. So, you know, things like that are making me happy where, you know, more rappers, you know, are meeting, you know, more, um, like legal people and, and lawyers be more accessible than ever before. Uh, because when I was growing up, I didn't see, you know, anybody like myself, uh, a person of color, um, you know, when I wanted to be a, a music lawyer. Um, and it, eventually I got to, got to, you know, meet someone through Rich, Rich 3-2, which was um, Richard Antwi back in, that was a while ago, but he was the first person of color that I, 
you know, new as a lawyer, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. So I've seen a black man do what I want to do. I never saw a black woman, but I saw a black man and that was just like, wow, you know, that was a step in the right direction for me. Um, and I feel like nowadays rappers are becoming more intelligent. You know, we've seen people like Boy Better Know have been very savvy, especially in the trademark realm where they've been, you know, registering their trademarks. Uh, Jamie and Skepta have done a lot of that. You know, um, I used to work with them. That was like my first job, um, Skepta Street Team. So, so it's been it's been quite a journey, you know, to start from being a Skepta Street Team to becoming, you know, legal and business affairs at a major independent label. So, you know, it's a big step, and I just want you know people to know that they can do things because obviously. You know, I've explored in probably every aspect of the music business where I've, you know, done, you know, presenting on YouTube. I've, I've you know, been rapping. I've, you know, I've done different, different things and done <laughs> events. But now it's like I'm, I've got my lawyer hat on and, you know, we're doing big deals internationally. And, you know, I'm, I'm very excited for UK rap. I think yeah. you've absolutely been smashing it to see a black woman just taking <laughs> over these kind of spaces and some of the, like, the case studies and the people that you've worked with, it's going to be great to get an insight. And just drop those gems for those that are coming up in the industry now because it's so important to have a good lawyer on your team and to be savvy and to be intelligent. It's a lot more than just being an artist that makes music nowadays. So I'm looking forward to getting into that. And last but not least, King Tup, please, can you bring through your connection to UK rap? Yeah, so I've always been into rap from a young age. So just like Wisdom said, I was given an NWA tape when I was young and I remember playing it in my house like mad quiet so my parents couldn't hear it. And then, <laughs> yeah, from then it was just like, I just loved rats and Snoop and everything that like, was just constantly playing in my house. And then hearing things like Black Twang come on and on like Poet said on, on MTV and that, that was just like, wow, it opened up my eyes to UK rap because before that, I admit I wasn't really a big fan of UK rap. I just didn't like the way that UK rappers were trying to sound American. And it just, it was just weird to me. It was like, if you're, why are you putting on an accent? It didn't make sense. So then, yeah, so that kind of got me more into it. And then like Estelle coming out and um, artists like that. But then I've, I've had kind of a weird relationship with um, UK rap, just uh, as from a production side, because I ended up leaving the country and going out to America and working with like some, some major artists out there. And um, coming back to England, then I started working with a lot of UK rappers, so like Chip, Pro Green, um, Rich, I can't remember who else, a bunch of them. And then um, again, after that, leaving again and going back to America and then being out there and then hearing what the new wave was like from like from 2016, because I, was, I wasn't in the country, but my friends were still here, obviously, and sending me stuff. So I was hearing, like, just the new, like, Afro wave, like the, the Jay Huss and um, people like that. And then even, like, one of my close friends was co-managing Leif Smalls at the time. And, and I'm just hearing that, that, and it just made me think, like, how UK rap has evolved so much from before I left. And it just, and how it is now, it's just, it's just great now. Like, it's just popping. And, all the new artists coming through is great. You've got the whole drill scene, you've got a whole melodic rap stuff. It's just, yeah, it's sounding good. It definitely is sounding good. And it's a lot of reflection on how we've come throughout our journey to where we are now. So I want to start by asking you guys about the current UK scene and your thoughts on it. It's been a lot more commercial nowadays and the support that's been behind it, whether that's through radio, through social media, through us not even needing kind of cosigns from the US anymore and it coming from internally for them jumping on our flows, them being such a big influence from the beginning days. As you said, NWA, a lot of you were playing that quietly in your houses at home <laughs> to nowadays where you're hearing it all the time in shops, in commercial radio, on TV, in ads. So how would you say that looking at the US from where we started at to you know the respect that they, they have on us now, and how we're using that to push forward this whole sound, which is now leading the UK. So there's loads of you. We're not going to do like a one at a time thing. We're just going to do whoever wants to chip in and just have this discussion, really open up some debates because we might have some conflicting opinions. We might have some ones that we agree on. So yeah, if you do want to speak, just give me a little sign. But who would like to kick us off and start? I know it's quite a big one to start on, but why not? Well, it goes to the rig, which is... Why not? 
Why not? Why not? I'll start. Let's go, Scully. I think the biggest change, obviously in the world, but obviously in the world of music, which is pertinent to this conversation, is the internet, because the internet has allowed us to export culture so that we no longer rely on what's on our TV or in our newspapers to decide what the dominant kind of cultural push is at the time. So when we were growing up, all of us, it was America. Like America was in movies and on TV and on the radio and whatever you heard was America. So a lot of people like saying, we're doing hip hop, we're doing rap, but everybody wants to sound like America because the dominant cultural identity, first of all, is American. And then just as black people, the, the general understanding of black people in the Western world is, is the American lens, right? Mm -hmm. And then once the internet comes into play, we can now show our own stories. It's no longer, it's got to be controlled. It has to be perfect for the, for the Western gaze. Like it has to be done through, so like this film can be done through Hollywood or whatever, whatever. Oh, it's an English story, but we're going to Americanize it. None of that matters. You can just go on YouTube. I can go on YouTube right now and live stream what's going on here and tell the British story and give a black British perspective and people will start to get it. And that's the biggest change in music because in the wider world, so when we talk about England, Britain, Europe as a whole, or the entire world, they now understand black Britishness because we've been able to tell our stories, whether that's through mediums like Top Boy on Channel 4 or whether it's through albums like Home Sweet Home, like Kano or, or Dizzy starting to go international, whether it is black Britishness has now find, found its own platform and its own way of portraying itself. And that's helped UK rap grow now because we don't have to try and be American. We could be like, yo, we get what the art of rap is. We get what hip hop is. We're now going to put our own black British spin on it. You see it with Jill. Jill's the best current live case study for it. That was a Chicago thing. And we were all sat at home in like 2011, 2012, watching Chief Keef on YouTube. And he's making this exciting new sound. That's a subgenre of rap. And some kids in Brixton have been like, yo, I kind of get what he's saying. Like, I don't live in Chicago, but I live in Brixton. There's still, you know, the same kind of socioeconomic problems. But over here, we got knives. You don't have guns. So we're going to do our own spin on that. And now Jill is being re-exported from the UK, from Brixton, back to America. Now New York kids are trying to do what Brixton rappers are doing here. Like, do you know how amazing that is? Like, if you told me that at 14, I'd be like, no way. Impossible. We become the dominant sound. That's why Jake came over here and stepped on Afrobeats because Afrobeats was having a moment here in the UK and he's like, yo, this is cool. Like, I want to be a part of it. So yeah, big up the internet. Yeah. I think another um another thing that was major in um helping was the production side, like the um producers, because like sonically for me, um a lot of the older hip hop from cert like certain other UK artists like back in the day, let's say, the production just wasn't there. It just didn't sound right. And I think now somehow the producers leveled up and it's even gone to the point where American artists are tapping into our producers. I think that's been one of the key things um, that's really helped uh, UK rap um, rise in the last few years. Yeah, yeah. I can read that. I've gone, Mr. Rigo. No, I was, I was just going to say, I think also a lot of that has to do with the increase of technology. I remember when Definitely, we were, the accessibility, um, yeah, like certain exactly. software and that Fruity Loops and Reason and the rest of it. We've got the same software that they're using. I think years ago, when other people were rapping, I don't think we had the same things. Absolutely. I remember going over to the States to buy an SP-12 drum machine because you couldn't buy them in the UK. Wow. Um, and that was 1998 and they'd been out since the 80s, and you just couldn't physically buy it. Why was here. that? It was just, but it, it, it's hard now because we live in the time of the internet where everything is available, but we forget that there was a world where you, if you wanted to see a US film, it would, the easiest way to see it quickly would be to go on a plane, because you would see <laughs> films on planes before it actually landed in the cinemas here. But like so much now, because of the internet has brought things on the same level, yeah. it means that you have all of the access to the same things. And back even as early as the mid 90s, we didn't. Mm -hmm. We didn't have access to um, uh, Pro Tools or, or high end equipment. Everything wasn't in a computer, it was a physical rack. So, you know, I remember our first recording studio, they cost about 1,500 pounds wow. back then. 
you can buy a studio now for £1,500, including the Mac, the mics, the speakers and everything. So as a result, it's meant that we've been able to level up because the creativity was always there. Yeah. But we didn't always have access to the technology. And I think that that's the thing, um, you know, watching during the 2000s, going from MySpace, um, to, well, before that, to physically going and handing out flyers to get people involved in your stuff, yeah. to then go into MySpace, to then having Facebook, do you know what I mean? And that transition that now, sort of from 2010 onwards, everyone's got access to social media, this has allowed us to be able to connect in ways and for people to hear what we've got that was never there before. The change is crazy. And I'd say like the playing fields are equal now, right? Because we all have kind of access to everything. Would you guys agree? No. Even like you saying that the other day, no. flyers and that getting handed on your cars. And now it's, I got a QR code the other day and it was like, scan the QR code. <laughs> and only up them after rave CDs. And I've also been given USBs, you know, putting my window wipers because, you know, the technology. Sorry, Poet, are you, would you like to add to that? Did you say something about everything beyond an even playing field? Um, like technology-wise. Oh, yeah, yeah, technology-wise, I guess, yeah. Sorry, you can continue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Just, Tart, were you going to add? I just want to add something to that. Um, yeah, like what they said about, you know, the to producers getting better and people tapping into UK producers. We, you know, we saw that with Pop Smoke. I think it, who was the producer, was it 808 or something? I can't remember the name of the producer, but he had the, the producer in the UK, you know, so people are actively looking for that. And, and now we've got, obviously we've got YouTube now, like when I was growing up, there was Channel U, everybody was fighting to, you know, get on Channel U and stuff like that. Um, but now it's like, there's YouTube. So anybody can really just put their music out there and, you know, less gatekeepers as well, because, you know, growing up, there was a lot of gatekeepers in the in the music industry where you needed to know like an A and R or a lawyer to get your your foot through the door. But now it's like you can just put your music out, you know, on YouTube. And and the equivalent of Channel U is really like the GRM dailies, the Link Up TVs, the SBTVs, the mixtape madnesses, and all of that, where you could just you know upload your music, pay the fee or whatever, and you've got the same access to the audience that you would have got if it was a channel you you know so we don't really need tv like we did before because everything is online like especially youtube is crazy i think the artists deserve a lot of credit as well that's one one thing we haven't said is you take a look at black twang when he was doing like i said so rotten that wasn't something everybody was doing so that's the reasons why it stood out for me i've got this yardy hook i've got my brother in it i'm like this is sick and that's not, that doesn't make you commercially successful. So for Black Twang to go, I'm just gonna do that because that's the principles of the music I'm making. I think that's mad brave. And I think those are the people that keep the genre of the music alive. The people that align the principles, the gets, uh, the wretches, um, all of those types, even part of paper um, now. And there's so many artists that are so authentic because at a time, without saying names, there are so many artists that had like two years and then they disappeared because the principles they applied were more to do with circumstances and how to be commercially successful at the time, rather than the principles of hip hop. So anyone that kind of took on the same standpoint as Black Twang from that moment forth, I have so much respect and credit for, because without them, there is definitely no genre of hip hop or rap. Thank you, thank you. Like, respect for saying that, bro. And I was gonna add to it to say, um, it's changed so much, the landscape has changed so much to the point where I'm gonna tell you a little short story, how we used to get our records to the record shops. We used to carry boxes of 20 records, two record shops in the West End when you could go West End them times there. Um, and you asked them, would you mind taking my record? It used to be called SOR, sale or return. You understand? So you might go in there, man might listen to it on the, on, the tour, on the turntable and say, yeah, I like this, you know, I like this. I'll take 10 of you. And there's no guarantee you're going to sell them 10 records, but you had to physically walk. We used to call it walk, for, what was it called? Walk street distribution. You know, the ones there, like... Barefoot. <laughs> so it's, I know it sounds prehistoric and it sounds almost like Stone Age, but that was only like 20 something years ago. You understand? So in a way to see what's happened now is amazing. And to see all the tools that have been afforded mm -hmm. to the younger artists that are coming out now and them, you know, picking it up and running with it and actually, you know, taking it a step further is really proud. To, and, I, and I keep saying like, I sound like a proud dad right now. No, but, but you are though, but, really. You know, that's how I felt, but like, 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 like Poet said, I truly believe in the culture of the, of the actual 
UK rap. You know what I mean? Like we had a real culture back then, like I referred to it. And, um, you know, real artists did stand the test of time. Was it hard for you to adapt or was it very much welcome? Do you know sometimes when there's a lot of change, it's not welcomed, especially when it moves at such a fast pace? Yeah, I know a lot of guys from my era kind of were like, you know, they were kind of fighting against it. But, I'm, a, I, you know, my nature is progressive. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm all about progression, you know, because, you know, we saw what happened to the dinosaurs, for real, they became extinct. <laughs> so you don't move with the times, then you get left behind. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it wasn't difficult at all. I was kind of just gradually going with it and being progressive with it and, you know, how does, how does it lean with it, rock with it, whatever whatever you're <laughs> doing with it. But yeah, it wasn't that difficult, but... um it is kind of it's kind of difficult to kind of keep up with it though because it's crazy it's always changing it's, it's forever fluid situation like one minute you're doing this you know next minute they're doing it they're doing it differently like before it was like the live streaming and ig live and the next thing they've got triller and then they've got clubhouse and then they're, they're gonna have probably call it <laughs> bashment or something like you know what i mean like, i don't know what they're gonna call it but it's you know that's that's the hard part but it's fun it's fun to see um i think for me when I first started doing music, I didn't see a show like Rap Game coming about. You had The Voice, you had um, X Factor, Britain's Got Talent. But now we have a platform where as rappers, we don't, we won't get lost in that kind of side of the world. We can come and tell our authentic stories as well as showing why we started doing music, why we're hungry for it. And I think to see that kind of platform now just shows how much UK rap is moving and is progressing because you wouldn't have seen that like 10 years ago in the UK. Amen. And it feels like there was a time, right, where a lot of UK artists were dying to jump on tracks with those in the US. And now it's like completely flipped it. Collabs from Africa, collabs from the Caribbean, and they're all wanting to get a part of that UK wave, whether that's, you know, rap, whether that's a bit of Afro Spoon, whether that's a bit of Amapiano, where, where, wherever that is, it feels like we are wanted. How valid would you say that is as those that are in the music industry? Yeah, for me, I'd say like the, the people in the UK, like rappers, don't care so much anymore about the the US coastline. It doesn't make no difference no more. They're coming to us over here. Like you got Drake, that's just must be on YouTube all day, every day, looking for for young UK rappers. So it, it's that whole the whole thing has changed now. Like that's why I think the music, the UK rap music scene, has got so much bigger because we know now that like, we can keep it here and still be driving around in Lamborghinis and Rolls Royces and all of that. That's all we ever used to see on TV was Americans doing that. We never saw no UK rappers doing that. And now like it's it's possible. So I think that's a massive difference that we've got here. There's actual real money to be made over here than there was back in the day. Like you, you, you could make money, but not like you could now. I think you've got to thank the government for that. They just shipped a lot of black people in. So, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some more Jamaicans over there, Nigerians there, Ghanaians there, some Congolese. Hey, we got a music team. <laughs> I just want to add something to that. And I think now it's it's because everybody has more awareness of, you know, royalties and PRS and PPL and registering, you know, their rights as well. And, you know, monetizing on YouTube. And I feel like before people didn't know, you know, about those stuff and how to do it. And I feel like, you know, copyright has become more, um, popular and artists have become more aware of it and and that's how they're you know making more money from their music i also think it's to do with the spread of the african diaspora um because you know, for, for me i'm i'm from barbados and i'm like one of the last generations of mainly in my age group of caribbeans because after that there is a influx and a much growing um african um uh heritage young people that have come through mm -hmm. which is very much where we saw kind of grime really take off in that sense because a lot of the early uk hip-hop um that was connected to the state was kind of from people who had a caribbean understanding and a caribbean background because yeah. that links really quite well and i think it's also so what's that that's done is we've now got a much wider base of cultures that mixes here under the the, the umbrella of black um, black British mm -hmm. than we did in the 90s and I think that's really helped that's what's exposed us to Afro Swing and being able to be connected to people like Burner Boy and um, Wizkid and everybody else and those kind of things that again 90s we didn't have mm -hmm. so 
it has been that spread of culture that and London being the mixing pot um, that it is, especially, has also really helped to push that. Um, I was seeing, I saw something with um, Skepta's mum talking about like her children's take on how they've managed to go into the industry and just destroy each part of the industry that they've Pretty taken. Much. She must be, she's like the proudest mum out <laughs> there. Imagine all three of your kids being lit, like <laughs> yeah, in know? different directions. Uh, like she's, she's good. Well, yeah, she's, she, they, they've done incredibly well. And I think that, that that's also come from this mindset of, of business and mm -hmm. her saying that they're, they're watching their dad taking his own um, um, business and then understanding and having the support behind them to know that they can. As Caribbeans, we didn't necessarily see that from our parents. Yeah, A lot of our parents were just working in nursing or on the buses and stuff like that. We didn't see them having their own businesses and running their own things. And again, we were looking to the States and watching what Jay-Z was doing and watching what Master P was doing. Mm -hmm. Now you can look at Disturbing London as a reference to say, right, I want to do that, which yeah. we didn't have before. So it's all about seeing everybody leveling up and, and supporting one another in doing so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the topic, I think, of democratization is, is where we're at right now. As everyone said, with the advances of technology, access has increased. And, you know, going back to your um, conversation of um, UK rappers wanting to collaborate with US rappers, um, you know, New York is is the mecca of hip hop. You know, we saw we saw what Locks and Dipset did at MSG, like, you know, uh, uh, specifically and, Jada Kiss. And, I mean, yeah, yeah, let's not yeah, let's not get it twisted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um you could see the patriotism, right? In 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 that energy. And I think it's all, without the internet, music has it's been hard for it to travel. So it, it was even hard for music to travel from Miami up to New York. Like it would be so hard for DJs, you know, like Funk Flex, like Cypher Sounds to break like a Rick Ross in New York. Like it, it would be hard. So imagine them now needing to break a UK artist and, you know, credit to, to Cypher Sounds because um, he was he was one of the first US DJs on radio with a radio gig to really co-sign UK acts mm -hmm. from the very beginning, like Dizzy, like Gigs. And again, these weren't even the first hip hop, UK hip hop acts. They, they, they just happened to be the first sort of like when when traveling became a thing you know when when the internet started creeping in with like napster and myspace and things like that so um so I, you know we, we have from a dj's perspective um we have to realize that it was hard for music to travel as you said you had to go to the record store uh to to, to collect music to get vinyls to, to carry the vinyls so it was even it, it was just the people around you that you had like the yeah. capacity to to carry to even and, and now now that I'm also with a streaming company called Audiomac, um, being the UK ambassador, I come across like hundreds of thousands of uploads a week that I go through. And that it, it's just, it's really like the click of a button. And it's amazing when we have access to statistics, people get access to their audience, like directly, you know, you don't have to have a third party, a middle, a middleman to know who your listener is on the other side. You know, that's, that's the reason coming back to the democratization of it, you know? before it was your 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 viacoms your 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 iHearts. those were just the big corporations that you had to break to even get your voice heard so now we can all get our art out to an audience we can and there's a lot less gatekeepers on that and you have a lot more onus as an artist yourself now speaking of all these little things it brings me to think of being a smart artist you've got to be very savvy so from you know the pr side the label side the legal side, all of you have all of this experience from the radio side of things, being artists yourselves. Can I get one gem from each of you about being a smart artist in the UK music industry and then a focus on rap? Who would like to kick us off? I know this is hard to think of just one gem because you've all got so many. I would just say as an artist, make sure that you're educated. Don't just go in thinking that you can just do the music because you might walk into a room, you might think someone has your best interest at heart and that might not necessarily be the case. So just make sure you have all the knowledge, you've done all the research for yourself as well as just listening to what everybody has to say around you. Nice one, you're right. Not everyone does have your best interest in this game. We can see people getting tied up in like sticky deals, sticky contracts. You know, the money that's been thrown at you at first may not be what it takes to really then put your project out, your, your deal together, things like that. Who is next with the gems for us? I'd say establish your brand. Nice. Um, uh, know who it is that you are 
what you want to sound like and what you want to deliver. Yeah. Um, because I think if, because now that the other side, the, the challenge that's come now um, is that there's now so much. How do you stand out? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's about what we're really seeing is people who've got really strong brands tend to shine through. Yeah. So if I take it, if I take using pop music as an example, if you take Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa has two subjects, boyfriends and breakups. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's so clear what her songs are about. You know exactly who it is. And I think as artists, having that clarity or and especially as rappers when we're talking about voices you know exactly who gigs is as soon as you hear his voice on the track yeah do you know what i mean it's it's having that clarity of purpose and knowing what it is that you are as an act i think is what will help you shine through so knowing your branding knowing what it looks like knowing what it sounds like knowing what your fonts are like even you know the presentation that you put into it you know how do you present music videos are you just going to do the same music video in a mansion with girls shaking their behinds or are you going to try and do something that might make you stand out slightly more do you know what i mean it's thinking about those kind of things i think branding is really important and sometimes when you're young and you're upcoming you you have a lot of people in your ear about your brand your look your image this and that how much of that do you take on and how much of that do you have like a baseline okay this is what i'm kind of doing to achieve because not everyone has your best interests what would you say i just i i, I think it's authentically knowing you is an amazing thing to be able to have okay. like and i think it is about being able to be before it's just a, oh well, i rap right about what you know having that asking yourself the question why do i want this mm -hmm. You know, uh, what do I want and why do I want this? I think is a key thing for any artist to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Because if not, anyone can come and look at you and go, right, I think you should model. I was like, actually, I want to be a radio presenter. No, but I think you should model. Now, you could be able to do that. But if you don't know you want to be a um, radio presenter, mm -hmm. somebody else's opinion can take you off that. And it's like, the more that you know about you, the experiences that you have, the things that you want to say, the places that you've been, all of that is your brand. It isn't just your logo. It is all about who you are. And finding the essence of who you are as an artist helps you stand out. Definitely does. I'm going to come to you next, Scully. We just mentioned radio there. We both work in radio. I work at KISS. You work at No Signal. So we see artists coming through all of the time. What would be your gem? Know your audience. I think a lot of artists can try and get on air kind of by doing a scatter shot approach. Let me just email loads of DJs and hope they hear the music and they play the music and then the people who hear the music like the music, but know your audience, know who you're trying to appeal to. Like, for example, if you know that I'm doing a show that mainly does alternative and hip hop type sounding music and you're making Afro swing stuff that's virgin on pop rap, why would you send me your music? Oh, to get all the time there? and gonna... on copy as well with everybody else, yeah. not even personalized. Yeah, like, like, because you know what my show's about. If you really know what my show's about, you're going to know that my audience is going to be telling you audience. I might do a punk rock show now and you're now sending me music that is like uh, soft jazz. And yeah. it's like, it's it's not the right audience. You need to know your audience so you can know who you're appealing to because it, it ties into to building your brand. Once you build your own audience and a strong following, who understand what you're trying to make and what you're doing, that that core following will grow and grow and grow. And now suddenly, people over there are looking at what's going on over here and they're thinking, "Raw, why has this person got such a big fan base? Why do people love this? Why are they selling out these these 500 capacity shows? What's, now it's 2,000 capacity shows, do you know what I mean? You need to know your audience and grow it and tailor to it until you can kind of have a bit more leeway with that. 100. Miss C. Brown, I'm coming to you next. Um, I wanted to follow on from what, um, so sorry, I can't remember your name in the white t-shirt. That's it, wisdom. Yeah, I think, you know, being your authentic self, like, is so important. Because I see so many artists just getting swayed by what other people are doing and not really being themselves or really thinking about who they are and what their stories is that they have to tell or what is different about them. So that would be like the main thing for me is just like being who you are, your authentic self and, and really shaping that into something. King Tut, what about you? Uh, I'd say think longevity and not just right now. So I mean, you can kind of tell already like what artists that are in UK rappers now that are gonna stand the test of time and who aren't. 
Like you've got artists like Dave and Stormzy who you can see they're going to be around for a long time. I'm not going to mention anyone who I don't think are going to be here, but um, you can hear in their music like why they're going to be here for a long time. They're not just jumping on a wave. Like they they're trying to be different. They're trying to go on different types of beats and stuff. That's that that works for them. So I just think that's what that's what a lot of these new ones that are coming up should do as well. Don't just jump on a drill beat. Like just do think different, and I think that will help your longevity. You're so right. Longevity is so important because you can get caught up about thinking about the here mm. and the now, especially when like you might be blowing on socials or you might be very popular. So it's just looking past that initial buzz. Sarah, I'm coming to you next. Oh gosh, I can write a whole Bible on the do's and don'ts of an <laughs> artist coming through in this era because there are millions of artists coming through in this era. So I feel like that's my tip is to remember that. Like you're not the only one. So therefore you have to you have to be human mm -hmm. in this whole thing. You have to remember to be human because you know, you, you can't look up or down at anyone yeah. in any circumstance. You always have to continue to be a student of the game um, because you never know what you're gonna learn from the person that's sat next to you or the person that's an executive. You, you just really never know. And you could be that next executive by pioneering something that you would have just picked up on from the person that's, you know, still in their beginning stages. Like it's, it's just, you have to continue to be human and just be a student of the game. A student of the game. I actually love that. And the Bible as well. I know there's so much you can come through. Abby, I know you probably have got a million wide list of things, but can you come to us with all them business and legal gems? Like first things first that we need to be doing as an artist that's upcoming in the industry. Uh, register your songs on PRS. It's, it's something you can do, you know, very easily. When I, you know, obviously I was a rapper before being a lawyer. So I would just, um, it was free at the time to join PRS, but now you have to pay. It's just a hundred pounds. And I, and I think that that hundred pounds is definitely worth it. Um, just to register your songs, um, um, join PPL as well. You know, if you if you don't have a, a, a record label, you can you can register as a rights holder because you obviously own your rights. So you register as a rights holder and you register as a performer. So there'll be two separate registrations that you should definitely do. Um, another thing I would say is um, be aware of your brand. I think your brand is very important. Um, if it's something you feel like you're going to be trading in, I would definitely say register your trademarks, get a good lawyer that does intellectual property um, and think about the, the classes, you know, of goods and services you'll trade in as well. Um, I would definitely say keep your social media consistent as well. Um, if you, it's very hard to get the name on every single platform, but try as much as possible so people can you know, know where to find you if you have the same name or similar names uh, on every platform. You're coming through with all the gems today, aren't you? <laughs> Registration, oh, yeah. trademark, and it's just a few. Thought, yeah, so, like everyone said, the, the brand is important. So even if, you know, you're having your, your, your brand on social media, just at least make sure it aligns with your music as well. And um, yeah, building a team, building a team. And at a very early age, oh, sorry, well, age in your career, you might not need the lawyer or the accountant, but I would definitely say um, at least maybe have a friend that you know that study music law. There's a lot of music law students that know a thing or two. You know, I, I used to teach at Buckinghamshire University and, and those students are really, really intelligent and if, and you know, advise their friends that they're managing. So if you can't afford a music lawyer um, or some somebody that specializes in that, speak to your friend that you know that studying music law, intellectual property. Um, another thing is a lot of people actually do offer free consultations. So be wary of those. Um, you can also get a list from, from PRS or PPL of you know, organizations. You can, you can speak to that, offer that free service. I'm, I'm always up for a chat, you know, whether it's a, a phone call or Zoom. So feel free to get in touch. Um, another thing I would say is um, just be brave. 
that that's all you know it's a very very difficult industry um and be consistent be brave consistent you know i i would tell artists to to go to you know access all areas because the seminars that they're doing are crazy and obviously the the professionals that they bring you know are always dropping gems so i would just say keep your ears open well, thank you very much. The little plug there, love that. And also offering out your services. That's that's great. If you're not taking note of who is on the panel and who you should be contacting after, then I don't know for you. I'm not thinking smartly. Black Twang. <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone said everything I was going to say to them. And the reason why is because I was actually going to say to Abby, like the first guy that signed me to an independent label to put on my first record, and we're going back to 1995, the guy that signed me was a lawyer. And the first thing he did was actually register me to... Um, PRS and MCPS. Mm. So I've been collecting mechanicals and residuals and whatever you want to call it from long money. You Love know, like that. that. <laughs> That's what I mean so, about being smart. So yeah, so <laughs> I think she dropped the holy for gems there. And um, just to say, one thing I would pass on to artists right now is whatever you do, do it with conviction. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because as much as we're saying know your brand and know your audience and they're, they're all right, there's a lot of people that are very versatile. Yeah. And this this current climate of music, so, we love so much kind of different styles. Some people might love a drill. Some people might love a Afrobeat. Some people might love a bashment rap. Whatever you want to call it, like everyone's got a different title and box they want to put something in. But these young people are into all this music and these are all their influences and they want to make that kind of thing. But what I'm saying is when you do it, do it with conviction. You have to because we can see through everything yeah. and anything. Do so it with conviction, innocent. understand your craft and, you know, perfect it and that's it. Coming to you, DJ Biggs on the Zoom. Can you give us your gem? So my gem is as someone who's constantly getting sent new music uh, from artists. My one's a simple one. Just simply label your music properly. <laughs> it's so simple, but overlooked, it's, right? Yeah, because like loads of times I'll get tunes and the and the file will be called A U D and the day and all these kind of mad numbers and like. They don't understand, like, that's useless to me. Like, I'm never going to be able to find that tune. I'm never going to be able to find it. Uh, if I type in my computer, it's not going to come up. So, like, label your music clearly. Um, try and send a press kit. Send your your socials. Send pictures. Like, all that kind of information. Like, it's basic, but a lot of people overlook it. And last but not least, Poet. Hello. <laughs> Hello, uh, uh, I... I... I'm I'm a lover of art. I'm a lover of art. Industry comes after art. Um, and I love all the things that you have to do in order to make sure you don't get exploited and all of that within within industry. It's very important. But the most important thing is the art. So what I would say is the art form of rap and hip hop derived from culture. Um, I would suggest that the individual in question who considers himself an artist within the rap or the hip hop genre to understand their position within the culture. Without understanding your position within the culture, you're just making three minutes, 15 seconds, and the world will decide what that is. If you understand your position within culture, who you are, what you're doing, then the beauty about it is everything is kind of self-explanatory. The video becomes self-explanatory. The people in the video are self-explanatory. The artwork, everything just becomes a natural, organic motion because that's where everything comes from. It doesn't come from the building. So when things are too strategic, I think that's when things go wrong. And if people don't believe, I say to everybody, look at the last 10, 15 years in music and say to yourself, who just goes, I'm Skepta, I'm going to do what I'm doing. And then who goes, I'm that, and then see how that goes. So I advise everybody, please remember the art comes first. What is your position within the culture? That will even tell you what music you make. And then from that moment forth, I would say get on to the technicals. I can't even cope. We get a little round of applause here. There's been so many gems here from brand, from legal stuff, from business stuff, from mindset, from authenticity. It's amazing to see and just to hear that from you guys because you guys have been in this music industry and you're currently still there. So you guys have you guys have withstood, withstood the test of time as well because you are still pushing through and championing a lot of the UK sounds. We're going to be finding out a lot more. I've got so many more questions. We've got a QA, and a so please drop your questions in the stream if you've got anything you want to ask any one of our panel or all of them together. I know that I'm going to be handing it over to DJ Longlands very shortly because we've got another special guest performance. And of course, he's going to be running some tunes and finding out all about them. 
DJ Longers, are we are we nearly ready? How how are we feeling about this? Because another performance is I think it's what we need right about now to keep the vibes up. I, I was in sleep mode just there. So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, we're ready. We're ready, darling. We're ready. We're ready to go. We're ready you, to go. You better not be sleeping on me. <laughs> never, darling. Never, never. <laughs> So, so we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. My name is DJ Longers, as well as you know, and I know they'd be dropping some gems on you right there for the panelists. Like, this is the rise of UK rap. And the UK rap scene is very special nowadays because the rap scene is at a place where it's never been before. Not just, not just the rap scene, the whole UK music scene is at a place where it's never been before. And it is breaking barriers, breaking ground, and is bigger than it's ever been at any other time. So we're going to play one song and then we're going to go and bring another artist back onto the stage. Uh, put me on the D. On the D, boy. Access I wanna fuck, it was freaking in the shit, boy. Uh, uh, put me on your bed, like, yeah, it's a bad girl, so we thought you could arrest this. Match me, like, we in a game of Tetris. Fuck that, I'm the realest and the best, is. I got the thing in my waistline. Can't stop, won't stop, I can't waste time. Money on my mind, I gotta make mine. Trippy on the beat and on the baseline. Uh, I said, put me on the beat. He wanna fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. He get me everything I want all on the beat. He come again and again, he on repeat. The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. He wanna fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. He give me everything I want all on the beat. He come again and again, he on repeat. Like, ah, put me on the beat. I wanna fuck, get all freaky in the sheets. Once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Triple A. Okay, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Once again, this is Triple A Access All Areas, your Triple A pass to the music industry, and we have another actor come on stage. So, let's introduce them properly again. Access All Areas New Artist Showcase. We are the home of new UK music. The next artist to perform on the Triple A stage is... Can we have a virtual round of applause for the one and only Queen Nix? How's everyone? Oh, I'm introing as if it's a. <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go. Hey. Yeah. I only do it for the family. I've been joking, weak to my knees. Trying to take what's mine. I don't fear if you please. Yes, they talk, they don't make no sense, so I give them breeze. Trying to live with the palm trees, wanna bend my feet. I've been all what it could have never been. Five things I'm juggling, they be calling for me. I've been the energy with the fire, we smoke with it. Trying to put me down, but it's struggling. So I play my ace, up in the field for days. See my snakes, like what's good? I've been doing what I should like. If they won't do it, then I would like. They cannot tell me what I could do. If I'ma do it, then I do right. Taking a break, I've been away. Increase my stay, fulfill my needs. I got clear my mind, I got so my seeds. Stay the same, they never do. I'm looking for change. Taking a different avenue, switching my pace. Uh, Follow my faith, uh, the only one on my side now, but it's okay, it's okay. We can cut it there, next one, let's go. To my value, I'll give my time for the right price. Bring out the fork for the right slice. Right now, I'm shit on my own device. 
Don't know about friends, can they change every minute like headlights? No, I ain't stopping for the red lights. Right now, I'm just trying to get my head right. From a different walk of life, so you know I'm in a different class. Give it to a Moscow, Moscow flows coming to you tough, they ain't got no chance. If a bitch buck up, I'll bring out the dog from the D-E-N Yeah, it's my time, big P-E-N No, they can't fuck with my P-E-N If I gotta change nothing to something Don't tell me about stopping for nothing Cause you know I'll flip that, flip that, whip that, whip that Ay, Charging my energies, how I spend most of my days Give me the fuel If a bitch won't step in my way Hit my charge, give me the fuel No, they never see me on my knees Should come my mama, then raise no fool Keep saying I'm the queen of it They must be the counterfeit Cause there ain't no two Back in a better receptive I already killed them all in my sleep, call this the remembrance mm. Hostess with the most when I come through mosh pit, no protest For the queen they be doing the most, yeah He said I'm good food but I ain't from Northwest Hey, mm. using my third lens more so I can't lose focus I make tracks ain't this and I oak so I can't be fucking with roaches I'm very interested in everything I do he notice He see my ocean like a potion, now we calling me hocus pocus Hey. My shoes, they can't put their feet in On a beat, they still hold their beat in Don't let my looks be deceiving Gone low on shots, it's depleting On my grounds, there ain't no defeating me Should have already known that I'm way too blessed My skin, they can't put their teeth in See the door and I gotta get through it Do it like they never do it Yes, give me a beat and I chew it The hardest, but they never knew it Gotta get through it Do it like they never do Give me a beat and I chew it The hardest, but they never knew it Mind over matter but I need more food on my platter, doing no chatter Letting off heat when I step in the room, it's like Punta Cana Can't lessen my value, I'll give my time for the right price Don't slip, but I will slide, but I will slide Don't know about friends, can they change every minute like headlights? No, I ain't stopping for the red lights, you know I'm just trying to get my head right From a different walk of life, so you know I'm in a different class Give it to a Moscow, Moscow flows come to you tough, they ain't got no chance Get it. So the last song I'll be doing is called Jug Flex, which is out now on all platforms. <laughs> Do flex, do flex, 
Walking away in my shit talk Don't let the road and shake Flex, do, flex Falling so lightly There's no one like me Do, flex, do, flex Walking away in my shit talk Don't let the road and Thank you, everybody. Queen And for everyone mix. watching, thank you. Come here, love. Come on, let's have a conversation, love. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah? I'm doing good. You yeah. went up there and did your thing real nice. Thank you. I know thank he's a bit you. nervous a little earlier on. Yeah. <laughs> so, hold on. Now, what I like that you gave us a little while ago, it was different from what we've had already. Yeah. Melodic rap. Mm -hmm. Now, where's your... Uh, inspiration come from when it comes to the melodic rap side of things so the melodic rap i would say i would probably say drake okay probably inspires that you know that side of my yes. music i would say definitely tory lanes as well yeah yeah that's and what now one of your songs like i've never actually heard the word before what is a juke flex Oh, so jug is like slang term for work. Okay. Yeah, so jug just basically like jug hustle. Yeah, you're on your work it flex. Means, basically. Hustle okay, and flex. okay. So work hold on, is 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 that like a because uh, you're from North London, right? Yeah. So is that a, like a North London thing, or is it just a word that actually most people use as a a hustle flex? Yeah, I don't think it's a North London. I think it's a London slang. It's okay. Just, I think it's an American slang, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we brought it over here, so it's not actually from Tottenham. Yeah. So or North London, yeah. But yeah, it's a slang that we use in London. Wicked, Joke. wicked. So like your uh, your your rise up in the game. Tell us how you came into the game. So I started writing music mm -hmm. when I was like eleven years old. Okay. I recorded and I just kept writing, writing, writing. Mm -hmm. I recorded my first song when I was like 14. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad's a DJ as well. So I've always okay. kind of grew up around the whole music, you know, being in my Same household. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I've just kept doing it ever since. I haven't stopped writing and recording ever since then. So when you say you, you, you was always like writing and recording from since you was 11, what kind of music was you writing and recording at that time? I started writing rap music. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I... I initially started rapping. Yeah. I used to sing like when I was younger in church, but I never really start like I didn't start my career singing. I started my career rapping basically. Okay. So just writing rap music, mm -hmm. like hip hop rap mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And was you ever one of those people to like kind of rap with an American accent as well, or was you no, just always never. UK, <laughs> just like <laughs> no, yo, no. my name's Queen no. Nix and I'm 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 from the Bronx and <laughs> No, no, no. Maybe when I sing, uh -huh. yeah. I've got a so little accent. Outside, so, so singing is kind of different, you know. Yeah, Even though you've got rap, some no. people who do rap or sing with a uh, with an American accent, yeah. Like, and some people do sing with a UK accent. Mm -hmm. I that's slightly different. Yeah. But you know what? It's I like to hear the UK rap with yeah. their with their mother Definitely. tongue kind of thing. And um, where did you get the name Queen Nix from, though? So, it's I just. I feel like being a queen is just owning yourself and yes. owning who you are, really. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's what I do. So, and Nix is my name. Yeah. So, Queen Nix. And uh, <laughs> this this is something that's kind of outside the box. But what other names did you have before Queen Nix? I know, I know that wasn't probably your first name. What was it? I just had Nix. Okay. It was Nix. Yeah. And now it's Queen Nix. Okay. So, <laughs> so you, that's been it. Yeah. So, you used to actually spit like, yeah, my name's Nix, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, literally. That's about it. Okay. No, no that's, other that's, names. that's wicked. And I, 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 but the, so, what about the spelling for your name? Because the spelling for your name is kind of it's different. Tricky. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it's Q V double yep. E double N V C S. And why I spell it like that is because the um, the V stands for um, Greek numeral number five. Okay. And I'm the fifth child, so that's where that all comes from. Yeah. Okay. And also, I have a brand called the Fifth as well. So. Yeah. And but and and even on the Knicks as well because the V is also on the Knicks as well, right? Yeah, it, it just stands for the Greek numeral number five. Mm -hmm. I just thought it looked good as well when you write it out. Okay. So. All right. So last but not least, let's get you to plug yourself. Like, where can they find you? Where can they hear um, your music, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Yeah, you can find me on all social media at Queen Nix, Q V double E double N V C S, and that's the same for everything. Yeah. So give them that one more time. Q V double E. 
double N V C S. I know it's difficult, but from the first four letters, I should come up. <laughs> so hopefully. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's get a virtual round of applause for Queen Nix. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, we're back. It's that time again. So let's introduce our panelists. It's time to drop knowledge. Your Access All Areas panel begins now. Moderated by your AAA resident, Jay McGregor. Very happy to be back on the panel after that incredible performance. I hope you're still doing all right. You're doing really, really well so far because we've got a lot of comments coming in with questions. We've got a lot of gems being dropped from our panel. We are AAA Access All Areas and I'm your moderator, Jay McGregor. Now, if you've forgotten who's on our panel, don't worry, I'll give you a reminder. We are joined not only on the stage, but also with our crew on the Zoom full of industry experts who are discussing the rise of UK rap. So, little roll call name check. We have got Black Twang, UK rap and R&B legend and producer. We have got Wisdom, head of Tyard Impact and Hip Hop Pioneers, Green Jade. We have got Scully, music and radio exec at No Signal. We have got Leisha, UK rap artist and recent finalist of the Rap Game UK. We have got DJ Sarah Harrison, Rinse FM, and also a presenter. We have got poet, presenter, creator, and you'll see the Yo MTV raps in the background representing. We have got King Tut, music producer, and ACM mentor. We have got DJ Big O's DJ and co founder of Music PR Sinks In. We've got Abby Lupa Deju, lawyer and head of legal and business affairs at Ninja Tune. And we have got Miss C Brown. I've got a long list here because she's so sick. DJ, DJ, international event organizer, Tate's UK founder, SyncedIn, and ACM lecturer. Are you guys all right still? Yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah. Are you getting tired yeah, from dropping yeah. all those gems yet? Are you still with me? Good. You're good. We're just warming up. We're just warming up. Oh, we're just warming up. I can deal with that. We're talking about the rise of UK raps. So I'm going to jump straight back in. I'm going to do a little bit of a quick fire. I want one artist that really inspired your UK rap journey, and I know that's hard. And I want one current artist who's continuing that spark for you. Ooh, yeah, I'm coming in hard. Who's going to kick us off? Um, one artist that inspired me from back in the days was um, a guy called MCD Silent Eclipse. And um, yeah, for many reasons, he was just an amazing performer, mm -hmm. amazing lyricist. And from now, um, I know it's probably on trend right now, but honestly, listen to his album again just for the last week or so. Dave, Dave's album and Dave as an artist, I'm, you know, I take my hat off to him. Salute the brother. Straight out the gate, love that. Who is going to follow up from that? Um, I'm going to say Black Twang, actually. <laughs> um, oh, I love that. No, seriously, like, um, Twang was the first of, it felt like, of us out there. Yeah. And um, I was saying to him earlier about, he had an um, a album and a tune called Kickoff, which came off around the same time as the World Cup. And it was the first artist I'd seen connect a song to something that was happening in culture mm -hmm. and bring the two together. And I was really inspired by that and how he'd done that and, and navigated. And also having multiple albums. It wasn't just one. It mm -hmm. was, you know, over time from GCSEs and uh, all sorts of um, uh, stuff that he had done. So that was a real inspiration for, for me coming up. Um, I would say now, um, Wretch Free 2, I think, is the greatest to ever do it. Like, I, okay. I it, it, it confuses me that he doesn't have the level that he has because he is an awesome both person and artist. And I just love what he's done and what he brought to it and the lyricism that he's brought, you know, and, yeah, just, like, carrying Tottenham forward almost. Like, it, it, yeah, Wretch Free 2 is awesome. Nice one. Who is going to follow that? Anyone on the Zoom crew? I'll go. I'll oh, go, you're going to go love that? I would say Young Steflon, purely because I've seen him do grime and be amazing at it. And, like, he really stood out in grime in South London, which is a mad thing to do because, obviously, we were more about our rap. Yeah. But he was, like, in a prominent grime crew and doing it very well. And then, obviously, everything he's achieved in UK rap, even Drill, he's a true lyricist. He can make so many different types and subgenres of rap and he's just so good and he's still so young like I forget he's like he's like two three years older than me but I've been watching him make music for like 20 years it feels like <laughs> and what about somebody now somebody now probably Jay Huss I think Jay Huss is the most interesting rapper he's one of the most interesting rappers in the world to me like I just think he's so different I think the way he puts together songs I think the way he puts together projects everything about him he's just one of a kind 
repping for the militarians, yeah? Top militarian, me. <laughs> on a Zoom crew, please, who have we got? Someone that's inspired you and someone that you're feeling now. Miss C. Brown, I can see you there. Yes, so I'm going to say someone that's inspired me. I'm going to go with Rodney P. Because he was the first person. In fact, London Party was the first group I remember just sounding regular, sounding like where they came from. And for me, it was mind-blowing to see that, you know, and, and that really kind of, that had an impact on me. And it made me feel... Like, even though they weren't from Brum, it was like, gosh, these guys are from the UK. I'm watching them, they're on my TV, and they sound regular. They sound like they're from the UK, so that, that was a massive thing for me. And I can remember watching the videos, like, over and over and over and over again on the box. And um, I must have collected up so much money, like, dialing up that video. Like, yeah, that was mad. But definitely um, Rodney P and London Posse. For now, I'm going to say millions, because... He's done so well, and um, I remember him from when I was a kid. I know his mum, his mum used to rap, so I feel like I've seen his journey, do you know what I mean? From his mum bringing him out to like all the shows, and Little Miggy was always there. So to see what he's actually achieved now, and he's repping the city so hard, and like, just so proud of him, man. So yeah, that's, that's my two. That is really cute. I didn't know about little Miggy, but I do now. <laughs> but we're all my drop that one in there. Who is next from our Zoom crew? Poet, you there? Yeah, might as well. Um, I'm mad territorial, so I'm gonna go with someone from like Tottenham North, but I'll go with like yeah, Suki, because um, he's like one of the first people I saw do a freestyle, and I had to smash up my little room. I completely ruined it. <laughs> the energy from a risky roads to freestyle just didn't make any sense to me. I absolutely love him. And he had like a Strata mixtape that came out like two years ago or EP. It's like four or five tracks long. But just the way he sees his community, he's from the same hood as like Suspect. And you can listen to Suspect's music, high energy. And Jesse James is from the same block, but he, the way he perceives it is, is mind blowing to me. It's absolutely incredible. So um, yeah, Jesse James Solomon. Thank you for those two there. DJ Big O's, who is going to be your two? Um, you know who I'm gonna go with Sway, because like you know like when he was doing his thing and that like he like as a rapper like there weren't a lot of rappers when he was doing his thing and like just the vibe that he came with like he wasn't I know he wasn't I know gangster rapping it was it was appealing it was a breath of fresh air he's one of the first um, artists as well that I interviewed as well so. Yeah, I'd definitely say, like, Sway, man, because he, he turned the place upside down. And what about someone now? I would have went with Millions for the same reason as um, C, because I, too, I remember him being, like, a little kid and, like, me coming from work, going straight to studio, and he'd just be there in the studio just sitting down in his school uniform. So I would have gone with him. But I'm going to go with JK, because, like, right now, like, what he's doing for the city, like, He's Mr. Birmingham, you know what I mean? And like, we have a lot of artists, but he's the one that can bring everyone together. Like, especially like the other day, he had his birthday party and he's just bringing everyone together in the city. Like, it's amazing. So, and he's, he's doing great stuff as well. So yeah, I'm gonna go with JK. Two very nice ones there. Abby, I'm coming to you next. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of a sticky one still. It is, it is for you. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble, you know. <laughs> Very sticky. Um, I I would say Skepta, you know, and that's that's me being biased because, you know, um, he, he did give me my first chance in the music industry before I went to university and everything like that. And um, he's been so consistent over the years and he's been a big inspiration um and you know he's he's done everything he said he would do and it's just been mind-blowing to see the levels of that um it's 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 a bit tricky because the person that i'm thinking of now um 
like I, I initially wanted to say Heady One because you know I you know he's my client I've, I've done you know work with him and all and he's also shown the same qualities that Skepta had, has shown and I don't know if it's a Tottenham thing but he did show the same qualities but the, the person my heart is telling me to say is Stormzy just because I'm so big on education and what he's done you know with the scholarships over the years has been absolutely mind-blowing you know he's 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 done this like the last five years he started with this you know um, scholarship stuff and more recently he's partnered with HSBC um, to provide scholarships of you know 20 people to Cambridge and you know it just shows that he's giving back to his community you know and giving back to the black community as well um, which is a big problem where people do struggle with finances um, and and that's why they sometimes don't proceed to you know higher education um, levels and university masters or whatever so what he's done for the community is amazing and I have to put a lot of respect for that so that's the artist I would say for today very, I think very valid there, and you haven't got yourself in any trouble. I think you've given some yeah. very good reasoning behind it. Yeah. And King Tut, what would be you, your two, one that's inspired you and one that you're feeling right now? Uh, I'd say back, one that's inspired me from previous would be SAS. I don't know if people know who that is. I hope they do. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. They were just, <laughs> and I still, I still friends with them today. I just think they're just a, they're probably, to me, they're, they're like one of the greatest that's come out of the UK. And just the way that they managed to bridge the gap um, and could really handle the Americans. Like they, they were on, they were on dip set records and they didn't sound out of place. And like they still, they just sounded incredible to me. So it's them. Um, and I'd say now, I think, well, it's not really now, now, because he's not like at the peak of his game, but like, I still think he's incredible chip. Uh, Chip has always been just amazing to me. Like from when he was a kid, like on Grime Records, and and then he just when he grew up a bit, and then got in the charts, just killed it in the chart. And now, like he, I just really respect him as a rapper. From like being in studio with him, it's just like you can really see that he understands how to rap. And I think that's so important. I mean, there's so many artists now that just I don't feel like they understand the how to rap. They just they can rap, but they don't understand it. And that chip to me really understands it. So I'd say those those are my two. Some really interesting picks there. Some of you have got some similar ones, but all of you are kind of co-signing each other. So something must be going on right. Now I want to move on to the importance of radio when it comes to UK rap and pushing it to the forefront. These are a lot of different audiences that are taking it in, whether it's commercial radio, community radio, pirate radio public broadcaster radio, it's all different types here that are pushing it forward. So how important is it? And then we'll get into, you know, what is the best way to use it coming from that artist perspective? Who would like to kick us off? Um, as a pirate DJ, well, I used to be a pirate DJ. I think it's like overly important, especially like, cause you want your music hitting all levels and even like labels understand this like because I used to think like I'm because I'm a pirate DJ um a pirate DJ I didn't think like big companies and big labels would want to mess about with man but they didn't they didn't mind as long as the music was getting out there and getting to people that was the main thing so yeah man I think pi uh, pirate DJs are definitely uh, important essential very essential because you see it as a big circle really it's a big feeding circle your, your pirate radio, your community radio, your commercial radio, you see what goes on playlists and how it gets pushed up kind of to like the top of the, the feeding chain at these points, but it doesn't measure the impact that it has on cultures when it's getting spun because you know where it kind of began. Like you see a lot of artists at the start of their careers to how they progress when they've got all their media training and now they're ready to you know put things out there on those bigger platforms. Yeah, and as a pirate DJ, I had like freedom. I could play whatever I want, do what I want. Like I could play explicit versions it was totally like up to me kind of thing and i think that was also essential i feel like it's come back round. Mm -hmm. i think that there was a point where it felt like radio was so far away um and what you had to do to get on a playlist 
was so complicated that people didn't bother and when yeah. people were were like well how can i get on a spotify playlist because that's more easily accessible um and we moved from a lot of like traditional pirate radio which was you know in an estate being broadcast do you know what i mean yeah. like to then um a lot of what were pirate radios going on to internet radio um, and I think, again, someone mentioned before, I think what Scully was saying about knowing your audience. And sometimes I think in talking to a lot of younger artists, they forget radio a little bit. And I think they're, they're, but we're now with like No Signal, it's become much more of a conversation and people seeing how you progress from local radio stations up to, um, like you say, public broadcasting, then onto places like KISS, and then needing to be that progression in the public domain. And it's not just about your streaming on Spotify um, to be able to build an audience for people to get to know you and grow with you. So I think the radio is, has become again, uh, I, I'd say going back for me, you, it was such a fight to get on radio. Yeah. Like I got onto Choice because... Two, I'm sorry, 279. 279 wouldn't play our stuff. So um, he had a competition called 60 Seconds of Fame. Yeah. Um, so what you had to do was you had to ring up, rap for 60 seconds against another MC, and whoever won four weeks in a row got to come on the show. Four weeks in a row just to, to come four, on the yeah, show? Had to win four weeks in a That's row. That's wild. So I went on to 60 Seconds of Fame and battered people for four weeks, and that was how I got Green Jade on radio. Na, 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 na. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> All right, so... Like, that was what we had to go through just to get on a specialist show, let alone a playlist um, back in the day. But now with one of the... Also, people kind of forget when One Extra came, One Extra came with a mandate that it had to play something like 60% UK music, right? No one was doing that at the time. Yeah. We had to fight for that. And I remember arguments at Urban, uh, Urban Seminar trying to talk to radios about, please play UK stuff. So now that there is that platform where... You've got one extra supporting UK acts and stuff like that. It's, I think it's grown back again. And, and I think that's what's led to us being in the situation now where, like I say, you can listen to, um, I mean, Capital Extra, which was choice, and it's only playing UK stuff. Like, that was never the case when I grew up. Do you know what I mean? So that it, there's been some real great strides forward in that and what that's done for the culture. Well, try to say the least, I can't believe you were battling people for four weeks just to get your song played on the radio. And I think now, like, a lot of the bigger commercial and public-funded radio stations are now looking towards your community station to represent, you know, mm. your West Side, loads of stuff like that to be able to see, you know, what's on their playlist. They look at No Signal and they see, like, who's doing, you know, 10 for 10, whether they're who's hosting it or, you know, who's producing it or who's bringing the new artists when they have their shows and then they're collabing and working together with different brands now, like radio after the internet is, I think it's the second best way to transport your music very, very quickly to wide audiences because there's no gatekeepers as to who's listening. You can listen in your car. You can listen from Yorkshire to, to Woolworth Road. There are playlist gatekeepers though. No, I'm saying, but as in, to, to <laughs> they, listen. They, they've got some power. Mm. Like, oh, only, yeah. and, and that's the thing. At the top end, there's probably about six people responsible for list, for what's happening on most of Korea's yeah. commercial radio. And they're still not necessarily the easiest people to get past. No, and right. I think that that is the, the discouraging thing um, about when you start talking about um, you know, your mainstream radio stations and stuff like, like that, because it doesn't always feel possible. It feels very reactive sometimes. It's like something's blown up on TikTok or something's blown up somewhere else. Yeah. Now that it's a big thing, now we're going to jump on it. And like not always championing new artists coming forward. And that sometimes, uh, I do understand the commercial restraints of things, but that's sometimes a struggle. This is an interesting topic for me because I see it from like, three different perspectives because I've obviously worked with in radio. I was at the BBC, I used, to be, I used to be part of the music team and go to these playlist meetings. But at the same time, my day job, I'm a presenter, obviously, so I play music, I broadcast music, I DJ music to people and select tunes. But my day job is as a commercial stream manager, specialist commercial stream manager. So basically, I looked after black music at EMI and how it's streamed and working on getting it on playlists. And I feel like it seems like two opposing jobs, like stream versus radio playlists, but they work very differently. They aim to serve two different things. And the important thing for me, and the reason why I say that is because without radio, there's no contextualization. Mm. 
So without a presenter, there is nobody who can break down the music, introduce it to you, tell you why it's important to them. And in turn, you might see something about it that's important to you. And I feel like this transports and sells music much more than people know. Like it's great when I find a cool song on, on my Spotify release radar, but more often than not, I'll just put it on and the algorithm will show me some cool stuff and then those are stuff I don't want to hear. And then I might like it, but I won't think about it. But growing up, I used to listen to Zane Lowe every night because I like loads of music, right? Like I like, I literally like everything. And it was sick to hear hours of a guy who would just rattle on about anything, any genre of music. But he was like, this is why it's sick. There's this rapper coming from this bar of New York and he's brand new and he's amazing. And there's this band from the coast of Australia who are doing this. And that contextualization is so important and it's something that can never be replicated, I think, by algorithm algorithms i think streaming will always play a massive part in how the music industry goes forward as obviously it's about making money and keeping the lights on in the building but radio will always be the part that introduces the music and gives it a story and we like to invest in stories and just to wrap up very quick um i remember sitting on a music team meeting and there was a song i don't want to name the artist in the song but it's a really nice like gospelly sounding song with a rap feature and the music team were like yo like i don't think we're gonna put it on the playlist but like you do a vote right and like everyone in the room voted that they like the song and they were like so i was like why i was confused it was like my second week there i was like why are you not gonna put it on the playlist if everyone likes the song they were like well you know it's a different sound the youth might not like it they might not take to it and i was like people actually in terms of music casual listeners because because we're all in the music industry, we forget that we're not casual listeners. We're not the main yeah. audience for music, but casual listeners are actually quite willing to take on almost anything you show them as long as you contextualize it and, and they get an opportunity to hear it. And I think that's the role of radio, being op- like being open to taste making and giving them new things to hear. And just to add to that, uh, I really like the contextualization point that you made. I mean, thankfully, I've always, I've, I've had the specialist show all my life. And, I, you know, I, I feel like that's been something that has kept me passionate about radio because I produce my own show. I don't have anyone putting songs on my desk and saying, you need to play these. I choose what I want to play because I'm a DJ first. I, I hunt for new music first. I'm a musician first. So that's kind of what's, and that's what's really, what we're really blessed about here in the UK, actually. Having specialist radio is is almost like a lost art, I think, um, globally. I feel like here artists can get, can get shine um, on a radio show through specialists, going through specialists. And that goes back to my point of being a student of the game, knowing who is supporting and and a tastemaker in in, in that lane, in your lane and, and, you know, looking at their journey and seeing, okay, how, how could I potentially approach that person um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm on both sides of the coin, like on streaming and on radio, literally, I, I do both every single day. So it's, it's interesting knowing artists now that they're, they're tugging me towards, you know, getting their, their, their songs on playlists on streaming. And then you get other artists that are really championing radio. Like it's inter- there's such a divide that there's people that still want radio over streaming or the other way around. So I guess both really do work together um so it's important to keep that in mind and and just hit where you can man yeah there's definitely two sides of the coin there really interesting points and scully i need to ask did that song make it to the playlist it did it did after all my hard arguing but um i became known as the problem kid like Ah. two weeks into the job they're like oh yeah scully's not easy he's gonna argue for stuff so which i don't mind i don't mind having that moniker i don't mind that being my my place in this scene Sometimes we need that, especially when gatekeepers aren't allowing certain things to run true. Now, as an artist that say I'm going ready for my first interviews, whether it's a radio interview, whether it's, you know, an online content interview that's really going to push my music. What kind of things do I need to remember? Because rap already sometimes is stereotyped a certain way that we've come past in the industry. When you look at places like The Sun and, you know, those digital platforms that don't see it in a positive light, especially looking at things like drill. So when you feel like you go out and there's a lot of pressure, you know, when you're representing the culture, even though you're not, you may be just representing yourself, there is that onus, especially within black music and UK rap. So what advice would you give when you are putting yourself in those situations to promote your music? 
It's a hard one. It's like going on Love Island and being the only black person there. <laughs> you know that you're not representing for every black person in the community, but you kind of are. <laughs> you are. You know, you, you've been on a TV show, Leisha. Like, do you feel like you was representing not only like your area, but female rappers? Yeah, I did get, um, whilst I was on Rap Game, I got loads of DMs from women that are trying to like get into the rap industry and saying like me being up there, it's just making them want to go hard, making them see that they can do it. So it was really nice to kind of go up there and feel like I was inspiring people. It didn't feel like, you know, I was speaking for all female rappers or anything like that, but it just felt like um, people were inspired to see me up there on that platform. So that was a really good feeling for me to be on it. Yeah. And you definitely had to use that platform to your advantage because there's some artists that don't even like doing radio interviews. Yeah, no, I think the first radio interview I did was pretty scary. I was like, I was scared to do it because I just was out of my depth. I didn't know. I just released a tune. Um, I didn't know what kind of questions they were going to ask me. But um, I just went there and I was just myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I just answered the questions, kept it me. And that's how I got through it. I just, you know, I just stayed as myself. You know, I didn't try and be something I wasn't. I kind of want to flip the question and say, what would make an artist feel comfortable, do you think? when they walk into into a radio broadcasting studio or Zoom, if people have been, been doing that. Yeah, for me, it's the energy. When you walk in and there's like that rapport before you even get in, because I've had like yeah. some awkward interviews where the vibe, we're just not bouncing off each other because the rapport is just not there. So yeah, just creating a vibe. Um, I guess don't start on the tough questions. If you are going to ask some mad questions, kind of ease into it, get to know the person first before you get into those, you know, sticky wants to knows. <laughs> I like the rapport topic because some of the best interviews I've had is when the artist on the other side of the mic is, as I said earlier, is human, right? Because you, yes, you, 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 you're an artist, you're your brand, you carry your, your brand everywhere you go, but you're also talking to a human. <laughs> so I think that, that building that rapport is really important. Like you're not sitting down to do a job interview. Like you, you're yeah. sitting down to hopefully be able to carry your voice and allow that presenter to continue that energy when you leave the room. Like, and they can continue to tell your story when that artist leaves the room. I think artists should remember when they're doing interviews, they're pitching themselves to people who might not know them. Yeah. And like, I don't want to make it so transactional and so like, oh, you're going there to do a job, but you are. Like, that is an element of it. So it is partially you're there to promo, but like, you are also at the end of the day you're trying to make a living off your art and part of that making a living off your art is selling it yeah. so you have to remember that this interview is a pitch to people like hey we i want you to come and listen to what i'm making and sometimes you can get artists you can get rappers come to the studio and they want to be really cool like see they want to be really cool and they're not really oh who do you listen to oh, i don't really listen to anyone but myself yeah, oh, dead, 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 dead. they're always like closed off they're like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like now nah, i'm doing too much so so how's life yeah man this pattern like, like yeah. bro like we're trying to find out about you like people invest in humans like you're saying so like it's not just now more than ever music is very important but people invest in humans they find people they like and they're like wow this person sick like i will always support stormzy because he is from the same area as me he's he's gone through a lot of the same life experiences and he's shown that he's just a good human being like so yes the music is very important and i always want him to make good music but he's always going to get extra leeway from me i'm going to give him grace because i know that he's a good person and if every rapper could work out like heady one is a great example of that as well because heady one is super funny i remember the first time i met and interviewed heady one i was like you might be the most unintentionally or intentionally funny person i don't even know if you're doing this on purpose but you're hilarious <laughs> and for that he's always going to get extra grace because it's like you remember him and you think, yo, this is a good vibe, but artists should hold on to that and, yeah, don't do the I'm too cool to be in every thing. Do you know what I was going to just say? Um, I think, like, the, it's, it kind of goes two ways, really, and truly. Like, if you're if you're a presenter or you're, yeah, you're a presenter interviewing an artist, like you said, it's like a job interview. And if you're, if you're interviewing somebody as a someone you want to employ, you would have read their CV, right? So I think it's important that the actual presenter does a bit of research about the artist so they Standard, can then, yeah. you know what I mean, like drive a conversation. So as much as they might be trying to be cool, like, yeah, man, I don't really listen to nothing, but you could then draw on his CV based on what you've researched already. You know what I'm saying? So 
I feel like it goes two ways. I mean, my relationship with radio is kind of mixed, to be honest with you. Like, on one hand, I love it because it broke me as an artist back when we was trying to get on the radio. Because as Wisdom said earlier, you know, you had DJs and UK DJs, you know, they had three hour shows and they only saved the last 15 minutes of that sh of that whole set between nine and midnight for UK rap. Like that, that was pathetic. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, so in a way we couldn't go on the radio and be like, Bruh, yeah, because you've got, you've got literally- That is your time. As Eminem said, you only get one shot. You're not, it's your chance to blow. You get what I'm saying? So in a way, I feel like my relationship with radio is very mixed. On one hand, I love it. And on the other hand, I kind of hate it on the, on the strength of some of the other things you talked about with the playlist thing, mm -hmm. where my records probably got presented to be playlisted, but I won't play it because it's like, well, we've already got that kind of record already. Or we've got that the kind of- boxes. Yeah, so in a way, and that was why internet kind of became such a big thing, where people bypass radio at one point and literally said, you know what, we're going to go directly to our audience mm -hmm. via SoundCloud, via YouTube, via whatever whatever medium it was. And I think, yeah, radio's back now, but, you know, that's my relationship with it. It's kind of mixed. I think um, going on to the point that you were making and that before, I think that there is a difference between artists going on to radios or for interviews with um, in sympathetic areas and being on Good Morning Britain, right? Yeah. That, those are two very, very, very different things. Um, and like Scully said, I think if you're going onto a sympathetic, um, you're going there to engage with your audience, engage with the artists, engage with the radio station and, and show your personality to it. I think um, back in the day, I remember specifically um, uh, Dizzy Rascal on Jeremy Paxman when um, uh, Obama was, was on, and it was the worst interview you that could was ever. That was wild, right? And 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 it was, and, and then sort of fast forward into seeing when Stormzy won. No, when Stormzy, I think, um, had done the Brits, and then his album had come out, and he just performed with um, Ed Sheeran and being on Good Morning Britain, like. You were watching Good Morning Britain presenters trying to engage with hip hop um, and struggling, but he carried it really well. He presented himself as Stormzy does. And that opened him up to the rest of that world to be able to engage in that world. And I think we do have to understand that that is a world um, and how you engage in it and how you make the most of it. And especially now that there are more artists like Dave, like um, Stormzy, um, like Heady One, going into that world, which is mainstream UK, remembering that we are still, as black people, only four to five percent of the UK. It's thirty percent in London, but the second you go on the other side of the M25, it changes. The second you go past the M42 in Birmingham, it changes. So you have to understand how you connect. There's a different way that you need to be able to connect with an audience out there that don't necessarily have your cultural understanding of things and that if you want to get to those kind of Stormzy Dave areas, you've got to work out how you operate with that media because that is a huge audience, but not necessarily sympathetic and doesn't necessarily understand where you're coming from. So it's on you to be able to um, communicate who you are and what you're about to that audience. And I think that that's a challenge, but it's something that can be done. Anyone else like to add to that? Yeah, can I just um, say quickly, just wanted to make a point basically uh, about the, the pirate radio side of things. Uh, for example, Bigos has been on pirate radio for years in Broome. And obviously around us, we're surrounded by artists from Broome all the time. So he plays a lot of artists from Broome. He has like a totally different set of ears that someone say on one extra is gonna have and he's playing like different music as well. So I think that it's really important for artists to definitely remember that, that within these other areas outside of London, there are different audiences connected to different people and different artists as well. So it's really important to just try and tap into that. And Pirate Radio is a really good place as well to hone your skills, you can hone your interview skills there. If you can do live sets on there, etc. It's a place where you can develop some skills in preparation to go onto those bigger stages and bigger platforms as well. 
very true. We are going to get into a Q and A. We've got some questions that have been sent in by our audience watching, and any of you guys can answer them. Some of them might be personalised. So shall I have a see what we got? All right, let's let's have a look. So this one here is for poet actually. You what see, up? Says, what's the best way to get poet's attention to a music video and planning on releasing? As I as I've sampled his voice on the introduction. What a hero. Um, I'll be so honest with you, mate. I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue, man. I have no clue. But just DM it to me, man. Hopefully I see it. My GG. You saying you got your voice on a sample on that? Yeah, but I'm wavy. I don't blame him. I would do it to me if it wasn't me as well. I'll, wave. I'll sample my voice. <laughs> that, that's the kind of energy you need. If you're not going to believe in your own source, then who will? Next question is... How can rappers use social media to their advantage? Is it about making music for TikTok? I don't think artists should make songs for TikTok, but I think you should use TikTok as like a driving force for the music. There is TikTok charts, there's TikTok influencers that can, you know, bust a move. And if they do, it could easily go viral. Um, so, you know, definitely do tap into that because I think we are moving into that zone right now like that is becoming the bigger platform over instagram at the moment so yeah utilize it i think if you you have to understand with that world that it is pay to play um yes some things do organically um, pick up but often it isn't as organic as people think that it is so put that budget in within it i, I don't think a tune like but you uh, know about rolling down in the deep i can't remember the name of the actual song yeah. right I don't think that that would have popped and be playing on Kiss if it wasn't for TikTok. Yeah. And I think so it's definitely understanding that you need to be paying for posts um, to be promoted on things like Instagram. Um, actually, TikTok actually has a list that it sends out. I don't know how you get hold of it. I've been told about it recently where they have a list of um, hashtags that they're going to be promoting each month. So mm -hmm. if you actually can find that list and you have something that works with the hashtag, that can push you up as, as well. Um, uh, but obviously social media is, a, is an amazing platform. But as I said, to cut through, your brand has to be strong and it has to link back to something that you're doing. It can't just be, I'm going to put a random post up that means nothing in the hope that that's going to be successful. It, you need it to link with you. Otherwise, you can have something that blows up and you've got nothing to support it afterwards. If you look at something like my yay is different to your yay, like which was huge four years or the three, four years yeah, ago. Yeah, that with Osh, yeah. Yeah, right? I don't think that there was much to come back with that because it actually happened as an accident. So you need to be able to think that if, you know, we're either building this thing on social media um, for it to then grow into something else or have some sort of backups in case something blows up. Because even if you think back to... Um, 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 Tiny Temper. Um, what was the first song of his? Um, because um, Ris Frisky was the second, right? Pass, pass, out. pass, pass, out, pass out, out was the first song, Pass Out was successful way beyond what he expected. Mm -hmm. So he made Frisky almost exactly the same song, which came out straight after it, so he could follow up on that. And because he had those two hits, that kind of helped support him so he could go and make the rest of the music he wanted mm -hmm. to. But if he hadn't had Frisky, it might have just shut up and just disappeared. So you have to think about the planning of it, of, you know, if we're going to do social media, what's the plan? What's the other things? Because it's not an organic thing. When you see someone who's not had any videos out and all of a sudden they put out their first video and they've got 17,000 views in a week, it's because they've paid for Google ads. Do you know what I mean? So if you're sitting there like, why is no one watching my videos? Because you haven't paid for it. So it's important that people know that that is part of it. Can I say one thing off the back of that, though? Go for it. Let's not please people. Don't get lost in numbers and gimmicky TikTok things. Like We're talking about something really, really important. We're talking about rap and hip hop. We're talking about Jadakus. Like, bro, I say to people all the time, you can think of all the wonderful strategies you like the people that are in charge of hip hop and, and rap are the people. The younger generation determine what's hot. The younger generation determine how to go about it. That's why I say you have to find your place in culture. The moment it gets too wrapped up in 
you, you can't monetize. Look, if you get 50,000 views and you don't know who your audience is, that's 50,000 views of people spread so far apart, bro, that could potentially ruin your whole brand. If you've got 50,000 views of people in a particular area that do a particular type of thing, that means everything you do, they will understand. You won't have to do a million interviews to explain yourself and all of that. And I'm just more with the stick with the core, like Scully was saying, and don't get lost in that, especially if you're a younger rapper. If you're a younger rapper, you don't even know who the hell you are in life and you're going to get wrapped up in a million different opinions of loads of different cultures about something so, 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 so like, I don't know, so specific. It's rap and hip hop, do you know what I mean? So um, I'm with the sentiment of Scully, man, that make sure you understand the audience that you're speaking to because it will allow you to know what type of behaviour patterns are good for you and are bad for you. Like I said, if I see Jadakus doing some corny stuff, like dips that we're doing, I'm not with it. Like, what are you doing, bro? Like, you're from a real place. This music is from a very real place. Like, drill, it's from the streets. Man can't get lost in numbers and... Man, no! So, saying that, though, saying that, I understand hip-hop is from, a, is from a, a real place, but a lot of these rappers aren't, man. Then Whoa. they should stay authentic and true to themselves. And that's the most important thing, understanding where you stay in culture. If you do all of that, fair enough, but you'll have no longevity. Some of the musicians we spoke about today, God bless them. They have no longevity because hip hop and rap plays different roles to pop and stuff like that. It has to be part of something. And all the position you are in culture, then all the, everything's easy for you. If Pop Khan didn't know what position he had to play in the culture of Jamaica, his career wouldn't, but he knows it because he's so embedded in the culture. He'll just big up Vibes Cartel on a normal because he understands the history of it. So half of the things he has to do, he probably knows already. That's yeah. what I advise the young I think the main, the main problem is people aren't looking at the, the longevity. You know? They're looking at what's now. That's why, oh. that's why TikTok, being a TikTok star makes a massive difference for you right now. But let's be honest, in a year's time, no one's going to care about you. Nobody. Literally, no, you got a million views today. Fantastic. I know lots of people that have done it. Presenting and having to talk to artists is so upsetting when you're speaking to an artist for three years and then seven years later, you don't even know where he is. Mm. And that's because of being a prisoner to the moment. I say, artists, be a prisoner to your art. That has longevity. Being mm. a prisoner to these things, I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't recommend it anyway. Mm -hmm. Never. And I totally with what Poet said, like 100%. Go on, no, I was just going to say, sometimes if you utilise social media wrong, your social media can be bigger than your actual, your the purpose why you're using it, right? So yeah. you don't want to become a TikTok star instead of a rapper or a Twitter rapper. Like, do you remember that phase we call people Twitter rappers? Twitter rappers. <laughs> funny on Twitter, yeah. and maybe they do a 20 second freestyle, but the music will come, you'd be like, oh, it's actually it's isn't good. So it's like, you're just famous really for being a rapper on Twitter, it doesn't make any sense. Or the rapper who's got a really, like, and this, I'm gonna use this person as an example because I actually like their music. I only still use Snapchat because of Fredo. I think Fredo is so funny. He's like, so he's, hilarious, he, unintentionally. Yep, like he says so much funny stuff every single day on Snaps, little pictures he puts up. Luckily, he has the music to back it up. Yeah. So it's like, I will not forget Fredo. So I'll go watch his Snaps. I'll be like, oh, he's funny. I'll be like, well, he just dropped an album. Let me go hear that. But there's some people who don't have that. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm watching you on Snap and you're hilarious. But then I go check the tunes. I'm just like, oh, listen, it's not good. Eventually, I'm going to tune out. And now people aren't using Snap no more. No one's following your music. What you got left? You got to make sure, remember, it's a tool. You're utilising a tool. It's a big tool because you can also get yourself in trouble. And, you know, this cancel culture is rife, especially during this day and age. You have to be careful what you're saying. You know, people aren't, aren't shy to dig away up your old tweets and all of that kind of stuff and just land you in hot water. And even that, Fredo's a great example. I will watch his funny content. That he's not trying to be funny, like when he tells me the businessman, darling. <laughs> and then when he's feeding his baby, telling, telling her to stop crying on the live, you know, what's she doing? And she can't even yeah. speak. And then I'll go and check out his album. It will validate that human side that you mentioned, you know, just being human and being able to connect with someone. So it's really interesting to hear your thoughts on using social media, but also not getting caught up and lost in the source of that. Now, I've got a couple more questions before I hand over back to DJ Longer because we have got another performance. And we're coming to the end of our panel. Aaron says, for me, being an EDM producer, I have a background with dance music and noticed a fuse with UK rap and electronica back in 2008, 2009. And now it's gotten bigger with EDM in, and in trap. 
should he continue blending them further? Obviously, it's what he likes, but from like a commercial perspective, from an artist perspective, you know, we see those fusions all the time when you go into Tiger Tiger and they're playing Biggie Smalls and then they've got a house remix underneath it that comes in. So what are your thoughts on that? I think if he loves it, continue doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think sometimes people get twisted when I talk about branding. and It, sh it shouldn't be something that is completely foreign to who you are. Branding is purely about understanding what it is you're fully about and being able to express that outward. And I think if that is something that's in him and is his in interest, you know, branding can also be used as the word unique selling point, essentially. Yeah. If that's something that's unique to you, and that's your, your passion is continue on with that because that's how we've had ch uh, genres pop off and stuff like that. And that's how things like, you know, Baseline and, um, oh, there was another one from Croydon. I can't remember. Dubstep. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how Dubstep came came about. Um, so even that's how Jungle came about. Jungle came about by, you know, having samples and hip hop and, and reggae speeding up, break, break the, the Amen break and all of these kind of things. Like, that's how it came about. So keep, that's what we need. We need people to continue to keep pushing the envelope because we've got to where we are by people pushing the envelope. And people forget house and hip hop were completely connected yeah. back in the early 80s and electronica and all that kind of thing and all that all of that started together and then split and it's interesting to see how it then comes back together and moves out so you know knowing where the music actually came from they're actually more connected than sometimes people realize mm. yeah being a producer is is a blessing honestly because instrumentals and even ambient music is one of is the most streamed genre that we have on earth so you you cannot box yourself in as a musician ever like genres are born because you know frequencies align together and you know we, we box them in and call them something um and for sake of like referencing it, it makes it easy right i guess if being a dj and i never had genres i'd never have crates and <laughs> you know like we need yeah. we need organization of some sort but as a producer, and if, if he feels like he's making something and he's making a wave that doesn't necessarily fit into anything that he's come across, then he's that's bingo. Like, I'm creating my own thing. Yeah. Like, exactly, exactly. You've pioneered your own thing. And trust me, there is an audience out there. There is There are ears out there that will listen to it. Hopefully, I mean, it's not clashing and things. And, it's, you know, it's, you know, not going to kill you. But, um, yeah, keep doing your thing, man. I've got my last question here from Simone that says, are there any radios or venues to check out that are promoting and pushing underground artists from the UK rap and hip hop scene? So any guys that you've come across, any places that you can say, yep, they're really championing it. Chip Shop. There's a place called Chip Shop in Brixton that and, uh, um, they do like a lot of, well, undiscovered acts and artists and stuff. So Chip Shop Brixton, it's, it's like a little small little venue. It's real intimate. And yeah, they're doing a lot of things out there as well. Big up represent radio every time. It's where I met Jay. Na, 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 na. They do uh, they do great stuff there. You know, they present they they produce some great presenters. There's this guy called Scully, there's this guy called Jay, David Gregor, they're all right still. Yeah, um, it's all right. Yeah, it's just a bit <laughs> all right. And uh no signal as well, obviously, of course. But really and truly, like if you listen to a station, try and reach out to the DJ as far away as they may seem. Like, I know someone like Ace, like, if you make R&B, for example, it's a different genre, but Ace loves R&B. If you reach out to him and you send him something good, like, at some point, he's going to hear it and he's going to be like, all right, cool, I need to and show this. You'd actually be surprised how many DJs are still trying to find new music, like... They are. Listen, yeah. we can co-sign that, because Ace was on last month, and he said on Sundays that he goes through mm. all of his emails and checks his music, so you're right. This is it, like... Because at the end of the day, the basis of this, being in this industry, is that you just love music. So you're always going to want to hear yeah. new music in it. So, yeah, just make sure you approach them respectfully and uh, know what you're talking about. You should be fine. I think that is the end of our Q&A. You guys have been a very, very sick panel. I can't lie. We've talked about so much. We've talked about influences, inspiration to the now, social media music, radio, there's been a lot that's been going down. So can you all just leave me on one final gem to wrap up before we say goodbye? That could just be on anything that we've spoken about today that you are just going to champion for, whether that's in your field, 
or not in your field. I'm going to start with my Zoom crew. King Tut, are you there? Can you give us just one gem? Uh, make the music you love. That's it. Make the music you love. Okay, very important. And what are your socials? If people want to get into contact you, get some advice, yada, 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 how can we stay up to date? Uh, it's King Tut underscore TC on all of them, I think. Yeah. King Tut underscore TC. King Tut underscore TC. Miss C Brown, what will be your gem and how can we stay in contact with you? Um, so I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Just be your authentic self. And on Instagram at Syncteen UK. So S Y N C D I N UK. Leisha, I'm coming to you next. Um, I'm going to say don't forget your why don't forget why you started doing it and why you love it in the first place um, and socials is it me? Um, Leisha Land that's L-E-S-I-A L-A-N-D on Instagram and everywhere else Black Chai I'm coming to you um, just keep it real man that's what, I know it's a, it's a night it's cliche but keep it real man keep it as real to yourself as possible um, as far as social media goes, Black Twang, B L A K T W A N G on Twitter and official Black Twang on Insta. Thank you. Abby, over to you, my lovely. Yeah, um, I would just say um, that all the artists should register their music, um, you know, PRS, PPL, MCPS, and um, to think about exploitation um, and synchronization. Um, for ways of making income from their music. And with regards to that, you don't have to be popular um, to, to put your music on a TV show or Netflix or whatever. So, you know, just have a think about that. And there's some really good money in synchronization, but they don't touch unregistered music. So, you know, it goes hand in hand. So what yeah, that's my point. Um, my socials, you can find me on Instagram. It's, it's Abby Lufadeju, just my name. That's my social. And if you don't register your music by the end of this live stream, then I don't know for you. I don't know how many times Abby can say it respectfully. Yeah. You're going to stop your own bag. Yeah, lucky you can backdate it, but that's just for, you know, it's not for too long. So just to register it, just to save any um, complications. Yeah. DJ Bigger, so you still there? Can you I'm give here, us your gem and your socials? Uh, my gem is, uh, remember you're dealing with people, so manners. Like, I was always told, like, manners will take you anywhere. So, yeah, just, just have manners when you're dealing with people because, yeah, man, that's my gym. It has to be. My dad would always say, with manners and respect. Yeah. That's it. And your socials? Uh, DJ Big Us on everything. DJ B-I-W-G-O-S on Twitter and Instagram. Wisdom, coming to you. Um, I would say um, lyricism lasts. Um, I think what we've seen from um, uh, Jada Kiss this week, um, some of them rhymes are from 20 years ago. Um, and I think that as MCs, just bringing it back to the music, have lyrics, like have something that people can go, ooh, to. Like, I, 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 that's what I feel, regardless. If you could take the beat away and you can spit that and you still make me go, ah, that was hard, that's... What I think is a, is a, is a, an encouragement for people in the future. Um, on my um, my socials are mainly on Instagram, so I'm um, Tal Yard Impact or Father Wisdom, which is F A R D A W I Z D O M. Howard, you're up next, my lovely. Um, I would say to everyone that makes uh, rap and hip hop, um, your life is your album, so stop separating your life from music. And get your business right, otherwise you get bumped. Ain't nobody out here that is trying to get bumped ever. <laughs> and Sully. Um, do I have a gem? You lot have stolen all the good gems. <laughs> I was gonna say be a good person, but Bigos kind of did that. I was gonna say pay your taxes, but Poet kind of said that would get your business right. So business. Um, yeah, I guess what is my gem? Uh align yourself with your purpose and everything else will fall in line. That's that's the one. That's what I'm gonna go with. If you if you find your purpose, everything else will kind of just start to put itself together. And what are your socials? Oh yeah, is that Scully? I S T H A T 
S C U double L Y on everything, anywhere. Oh, I had one. <laughs> it's all right. Um, just I know. Yeah, yeah. You overloaded. Um, I'd say in a climate where artists are at such high exposure, um, they're exposed as, as not just artists but as people. I'd say be kind to yourself. Uh, it can be a very long, disheartening journey. Know what you're getting in for. <laughs> um, it's not all fun and games. Uh, in reality, you know, you're exposing yourself. So stay, yeah, be kind to yourself and look after your mental health. That is so important. You see a lot of the highs on social media. Exactly. You don't always get to see the lows and everyone has their internal struggles and battles that are going on. So thank you guys for sharing. You guys have been a very, very sick panel. I keep thinking to myself, how are we going to top it month on month? And we do that. So thank you so much for all being really great panelists. Give yourself a little clap. Whether you're here with us in the building at Tower Yard or you're on Zoom, you have been doing your thing. And last but not least, before I hand over to DJ Long, as we've still got another performance to go, I need to give a massive shout out to Metro Fest, which is going down tomorrow. There are only a few tickets remaining. I spoke to Bobby V, aka Bobby Valentino, on my show today. What I mean, all the way from the US, they're coming. And isn't it feeling great to be back at our festivals and events yep. and things that are happening? We're going to have a live audience back in here soon. Yes. You guys get you off Zoom. Is anyone else fed up with Zoom? Done. Of course. <laughs> Listen, okay. if anyone tells me they're on mute again, I'm going to lose it. No, seriously, it's been such a lovely evening so far. And it's not over. DJ Longers, are you ready? Because you've got another performance and you're going to run some tunes at the end. You can get your network on in the comments because that's how we're doing things right now. I'm ready this time. You're ready this time. You're I'm not sleeping on the job. I'm not sleeping on the job. I'm ready. You better not be. Yeah, I, I, I'm ready. Bless up everyone. Bless, 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 bless. Bless up. Big love to everybody on the Zoom and in the building. Thank you so much for being sick. I'm Jamie McGregor. I've been your host and moderator. Over to DJ Loggins. Thank you, Jay. And we're ready to get our last act onto the stage. I'm going to play one song. Now, this is a song that is quite uh, important to the rise of UK rap, even though it's kind of more on the... Uh, he sounds more kind of yardy-ish when he's doing his thing, but the culture of UK rap is very much West Indian based. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of Cockney and the West Indian side to it. So, who remembers this? Here's the number one. Don't let me get serious. I want fixes, my half girl, but the fat chat. Don't let me get serious. I let my drop for my night, cause empty get cap. Don't let me get serious. I want fixes, my half girl. The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. I'm a little bit color. And I'm gonna test for my digestion. Yeah. I'm gonna fix some of the girls one more. Yeah. I'm gonna come with the girls one more. Yeah. Once again, this has been Triple A Access All Areas. Big shouts going to all who are going down to the big Metro Fest Festival tomorrow. You can catch me there and they're DJing alongside big acts like Fat Joe, Bobby V, Fat Man Scoop, Maya, Bobby V. We got a wicked one that's coming down there tomorrow, so make sure you're ready. That's the big festival called Metro Fest tomorrow. I'll be down there along with a host of others. Now, we're going to hit our last act onto the stage. He's going to come down and rip it up. Trust me. I'm glad you guys there sitting there waiting. Next month, next month, which is going to be an all-female special, that is going to be our first live pre-lockdown. Yeah, we've been waiting for it for a long time. You know how weird it is to be talking in front of a camera? How weird it is. It's going to be great to see live people back in front of us and be able to perform properly like we love to. So now... Let's bring it up an ultimate act. Let's do this. Access All Areas New Artist Showcase. We are the home of new UK music. The next artist to perform on the AAA stage is... I'm going to say it like this. Can we get our last 
virtual round of applause for the one and only T. Peters. Guys, good, yeah? It's me, T. Peters. I'm gonna give you like a little vibe. This is my first tune. I think it's called No Rest, because we don't really sleep. So, let's do it. See me, I'm all about this thing called working season. Cutting out all distractions just staying on task so this is kind of like my intro song to that vibe yeah yeah uh. yeah i went from anime clips to anime tar on stage and i elevate hands like police behind my bar stay calm and that's outside whether you know me as a kid with a spritz looking leaky as hell poor beast to get out of nam Cause I keep to myself, never speechless I felt like I really gotta fight all one uh, Shout out to my grandma First time that she heard my stanzas At my show said, that's my grandson To everybody there that she tapped on Fam, let's camera action On the day that I left my faction at school To be one whole of a fraction is cool To be yourself is so cool People thought I was a fool People saw me doing raps Iman told me I was bad Molly told me I was bad And old David said I'm bad Even you would call me bad But I just worked and worked and worked and worked around Every doubt I had to learn to be the proudest I could never be the guy who quit so after school, I practiced every hour, thousand hours, head of days and nights. I ain't archy elevating minds, but I practice like 11 times to write my wrongs. And I write this song in hopes that you will start the grind, be open to sacrifice some nights for you. There are so many bangers that you have, you know. There are so many bangers that you have. Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Because this is the thing when I listen to working, I can never listen to working one time free. The tracks that I love of yours, yeah. I can never listen just one time. When I listen to them, I've listened to them like five times, man. Five times. And I know you're going to end up using yeah. this voice note on the flipping track. Yeah. Or some shit, hey. yeah. Man, don't yeah. Care. Uh, this ain't no game of phones You can't mess with a lord at home I'm in my element rap so eloquent I make waves and vanish no evidence I move like Littlefinger Tipping your Lannister Pop out the canister New face, ah, oh, yeah, I ain't no amateur uh, This ain't no game of phones You can't mess with a lord at home I'm in my element rap so eloquent I make waves and vanish no evidence I move like Littlefinger Tipping your Lannister Pop out the canister New face, ah, oh, yeah, I ain't no amateur Peters, who turned off all his stresses, now his skin is looking lovely. <laughs> yeah, man, that was no rest. Like I said, I'm T. Peters, T.E.E. -E Peters. I'm all about working season. But this tune is called Almond Croissant. It's not out yet. It's a new one. And while I like to talk about serious stuff, I just wanted to make a song about me just getting the Almond Croissant from the shop. So let's just run it. <laughs> it's a vibes. And if you're at home, I want to hear some A's. If you're not in the room, feel free to communicate with me and be like, hey, you'll, you'll hear what I mean in a minute. You know, the almond croissant make me step out the yard. Hey, every month is a dance with the almond croissant. Gotta take off the mask. Hey, yeah. You know, the almond croissant make me step out the yard. Hey, every month is a dance with the almond croissant. Gotta take off the mask. Yeah, so. Satin on my tongue is sweet, while when I complain, see the finish like satin on display. That's all mine for the first time, like I got paid and nostalgia love. Okay, let me know when you're out, my love. I need that. Even more when you're out of stock. I sleep bad, got me sitting on the couch, I struck. Uh, I don't go out a lot, fam. You're never around, you're so rare. Got me thinking like, wow, you don't care. Don't care. That you're all in my mind, it's not fair. Rent free, make me wanna change diet to one gluten free. <laughs> you know the almond croissant make me step out the yard, ayy. Every month is a dance with the almond croissant, gotta take off the mask. Yeah, uh, you know the almond croissant make me step out the yard. Every month is a dance with the almond croissant, gotta take off the mask. You make me wanna smile when the sun shines. Glad that I met you in the Greg's line Baby, if they want you, I'm a co-sign But today it feels good that you're all mine All mine, uh I'm feeling cheeky in the night time, no bunch And she's soft on the teeth, I'm no bunch When she with me, I forget all the old stuff It's like getting jiggy in the bed with my old love, yo no bunch, and she soft on the teeth, fam, no bunch When she with me, I forget all the old stuff It's like getting jiggy in the yeah. bed, come on yeah. Yeah. You know the almond croissant make me step out the yard Every month is a dance with the almond croissant Gotta take off the mask 
Yeah, uh, you know that album the song make me step out the yard, ayy. Every yeah. month she's a dance with the album the song, gotta take off the mask. And you made me wanna smile in the sunshine. sunshine. Glad that I met you in the Greg's line. Greg's Maybe line. if they want, I'm a co-sign. But today it feels good that you're all mine. Oh, now I wanna smile in the sunshine. Glad that I met you in the Greg's line. Baby, if they want, I'm a co-sign. But today it feels good that you're all mine. All mine, all mine, 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 all mine. All right, cool. Final, final tune. I love the A's, fam. You know what? Yeah, if you're at home and you're a in, I love you for that because in this room it was a vibe. So I hope that when this tune comes out, it's still a vibe. Final tune. My final tune called Pressure. Released it last week. It's now sitting on international playlists on Spotify's Fresh Fans Hip Hop playlist among some of the some of the people I look up to. And we're just gonna keep elevating every season. Working season is a it's a, it doesn't end. You have to keep working and always growing. So let's run it. Thank you, DJ. And shout out to my friend Devin on the on the vocals, man. Pressure, all this pressure on me, heart inspired, feeling burning. Watch me shine like a diamond. Watch me shine like gold. Pressure, all this pressure on me, heart inspired. So, my head's hurting, I've been working these sleep surplus I see perfect, I see a vision beyond the curtains Battle with nurture, I'm lagging, forget that text on my phone My boy, I heard you, you said you don't like me, you're always alone It seems easy to be easy, it's not though I be sleepy, I breathe weakly, under pressure I seem free, but I'm knee deep in the planning method I love what I do Gives me so much pleasure, more so than love stress that gets me under weather. And right now I need nothing, just my best. If you need me, then call me. Never text, I'm D and D, don't speak to me unless. Yeah. I'm asking so many questions. I don't know what to say. To drive, then your retirement season, they don't bring the vibe. Why am I violent with this time to stop my grind? Writing bars like pilots while they're skating behind. You were wasting your time. If you ain't had to work, you ain't had to work in the shows. You ain't memorized no lyrics, you ain't booking no shows. Whether an open mic or open eyes, I ain't even blown. Even as I write these lyrics, I'm performing to ghost tunnel vision. Not even stopping if I see the light, that's sonic vision. I keep it moving while I hear the waves, I'm on a mission. It's working season, we've been here for days. No cosigns, big boy, just me and you. On the journey, it's slow ride, it's in the tunes. Nipsey said it's a mouth, and I got thicker legs. Then all these rappers with labels, and now we're in the depth. Now call my skill a depth, cause people know. Many see green, like pick and low. Remember Cherie said that I wasn't unique And now I'm better though they bitter though they better be pleased to have me in their scopes I want star among many but they don't shine like me I'm in my own space, that's a galaxy I just walk up in the thing and we make bangers be Yeah, and it goes Pressure, all this pressure on me Pressure, it's why I'm feeling burning it's like pressure. Watch me shine like a diamond Watch me shine like gold Pressure, all this pressure on me Heart is fire, feel it burning It makes you better, that's what I was told Burn, 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 watch me sparkle As I walk out the flame I'll never be the same again Bad, scary, there's pressure on you, just keep.
over, everything's just tumbling and looking like a wreck. Just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. What everybody in the panel said today about you just progressing and constantly staying true to the culture. Just keep moving, keep moving. Even if nobody tells you that you're doing your thing, just keep moving because eventually the accolades will stack and stack and stack and stack until you're on, on top. Do you know what I mean? So just keep moving, keep moving. I'm T. Peters. I'll go chat to DJ now. Yo, come over here, brother. Let's have a word. Let's have a chat. Now, we've had three artists on the stage today. Yeah, all UK artists doing their thing for the rise of UK rap. And each artist has been very different. We had one very street artist, one melodic rapper. I almost got my, my words wrong there. One melodic rapper. And how we've got someone who I'd say is a lot more conscious. T. Peters, how you doing, bro? Hot, man, but I'm good still, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheers, bro. So, yeah. bro, like, where does your inspiration come from knowing that, like, you're in a space where most people like to talk about, well, they like to rap about stuff that is not actually them? Where does your inspiration come from to actually keep true to yourself? Um, I grew up on, like, grime yes. and also, like, hip-hop, like, Biggie, Tupac. Yes. Bunch of people that were sick storytellers. Grandma as a sick storytellers because they have... A lot of bars to fill. Yes. So what they're saying on the tune is always like a lot of details. So I'm really all Definitely. about DL. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, listening to that side of things and then hip hop, and then also being introduced to like poetry and spoken words. Okay. It's all accumulated into me kind of feeling like I can be myself mm -hmm. if I just keep writing and learning how to be the best at my craft. I'll be able to express myself in the best way possible and make it look cool. Do you know what I mean? I don't have to say. Oh no, man's got this gang on me, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah. I can just be like what I said on thingy. I went from anime clips to anime tart, just talking yeah. about like watching anime, but having that idea of it's like a like a gun, but it's not a gun, it's yeah, just anime. It's do you just, know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, man, that's that's what I'm on. So I mean, you know what? That's important because a gun finger doesn't always have to be violence. You understand what I mean? Gun finger can sometimes be just a case of like, yeah, you're saying, yeah, man, that was wicked. Do you understand what I mean? Which people yeah. don't understand. So um, you see, I've even forgot what I was gonna have to say there. That took me off point. <laughs> um, so where are you from, bro? I'm from Peckham, South East London. Okay, big up South East London. And um, how long have you been writing? Um, um, I would say, like, as an artist for, like, the last five years. Mm -hmm. Before that, I've always been, like, a creative person. Like, my, my degree is in English. Before that, I was always great at English. Wicked. And, like, I would dabble in music as well from mm -hmm. young. But, yeah, so I, will, I don't really know how to answer that question. But let's just say the That's official right. one is the five years ago, That's all right. man did this. And you know what? That's what I was going to ask you before. You mentioned uh, being exposed to poetry. Do you actually yeah. do poetry? Yeah, man. Okay. Um, I, um, I went to uni and mm -hmm. I got my degree and I, I just didn't feel like there was a space for hip hop yes. like that. Because mm -hmm. I, I came out of Peckham and it's like, wow, there's all these different people that aren't like me. Yeah. And so... Peckham, a.k.a. Pecknam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to take... Without knowing it, because George, George the Poet is the same thing. Okay. He had to go and learn how to articulate his culture to a different audience of people. So I, had, I started becoming um, the treasurer for my spoken word society. Yes. Started like taking my lyrics and putting them into, into poems, Wicked. or even just writing poems about where I'm from. So that's how I kind of have poems. I still have poems locked in yeah. in the vault. So. And you know what's so good about what you're saying is that. Um, part of what the panelists were saying was talking about keeping it real within yourself. And that's exactly what you've done with your lyrics, etc. So let's get to plugging yourself now. Tell us about your socials, where they can find your music, etc. Cool. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere at by T P is B Y T E E Peters, P E T E R S. All right. So you know like what? I'll Just slow. Was that? All right. Say it. Cause that's what I'm thinking though. Man talks fast. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. B Y yes. T E E P E T R S. Um, that's my socials. But if you want to search me on Spotify or anywhere like that, you can just find me as T P as full stop and support. So, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our fine and our final virtual crowd. Give a virtual round of applause to T P as. Safe guys, thank you so much. Now, do remember, we're back on the 4th of September. That's Saturday, the 4th of September. We're here once a month, yeah? The first Saturday of each month. And that one is going to be an all-female special, yeah? 
all female um, people who are performing, so those are all female performance, and an all female panelist is going to be big. So make sure you're here. This one will be live, right? As in, we, we, I think we'll still be on, on, on YouTube as well live, but it's going to be live and direct from right here in Talio Studio. So we'll have a live audience. Make sure you're in the building. Now, uh, before we get out of here, I'm going to play a song that kind of shows the versatility of the UK. It's trying kind of drum and bass, but kind of hip-hop at the same time. Skepta, what are you saying? We're out of here, man. Remember, tomorrow, tomorrow, big Metro Fest Festival. I'll be down there performing with a whole heap of US artists, killing it, and UK as well. Microphone check, five, four, three, two, one. Keep dancing to the party's done. I ain't come here to hurt anyone. I don't want to hear no talk about gun. The only thing I want to pop is champagne until my face is feeling numb. See two man, then what one done? Check out the boxing with a big bum. Me and the man, then we look at black boots, jeans and caps. I ain't come here to lick no chaps. I don't want to hear no talk about straps. The only thing I want to pop is champagne. Until I collapse, I got drink, yeah man, I got food Come check me for the body rap I heard you were looking for me You don't need glasses if you're looking for me You don't need binoculars if you're looking for me You don't need to look far if you're looking for me I'm standing in a car now In a, in a car now Someone I'm a hard, I'm a guy, I'm a guy like them, I think In a car now In a, in a car now Someone I'm a hard, I'm a guy, I'm a guy like them, I think The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S Someone I'm a hard, I'm a guy, I'm a boy like them, I'm a danger The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S Someone I'm a hard, I'm a guy, I'm a boy like them, I'm a gangster In a car now Yes, 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 trigger Very, very terror dome I ain't come here to lick no phone I don't wanna hear no talk about chrome Only thing I wanna pop is champagne Until it's time to go Devlin Yeah Rich free too In the building Let's take it back there. Time to go in. Tell them wretch. Tell them yeah. wretch. I want some off with your head. I keep firing. I'm not the apprentice. They've told me to go in. Oh, yeah. So I've wrapped locked all the exits. Guess I'll be here forever. The chair so far, I'll leave here in leather. So dark, so cold. With a couple girls sitting on my lap, I'm never going to say I'm back. I'm a little too in love with black. I moved into the Mother. hall of fame. So I wipe my feet on tracks. I'm a killer. I'm a killer. See me with one glove, it's a thriller. I already had a number one for my dinner. And me and Dev go in there inner. And we're out of here. I doubt you're near. I've already been a thousand there. But if you live by the money, then you die for the money. So I ain't even trying to count it, swear. And if you don't think I'm... Middle finger up. I make you feel small when I beat you up. I'm up and away. I can't see ya. On my own scale, I'm a Libra. Told her leave me alone, I want a diva. Had to give her some dough to get a pizza. Every day I have takeaway. Tomorrow won't be the same today. I don't score when I'm at home. I strike more when I play your way. Shut down the asylum before I creep for the exit. Find it, jump any fence in sight, then drag a man out of the car that he just was driving. And then put the pedal to the floor. I'm back and I'm ready for the war like a Viking. I ain't gotta tell him anymore. Me and Rich already killed this UK grind thing. And now there's not a lot left that can swing with shit. Man, a dog to a death like Rich Free Two said it's off of his head. Got cold feet, let his frost in your crest. Then mind where you're walking, watch where you step. Mind where you're talking, I might dissect any guys on the ball. Shoot, why I'm gonna say, come with me, I'm a wife on the red. You really the most say show. Young spree, I rock the say show. All day I got to say show. More time I always say show. With a pretty girl that show. Face sweet, nice clothes, nice feet, nice toes. I can't lie, I got love for the hoes. Two fingers in the air, that's show, show. Yeah, but you already know. Don't care who you are, let you know. Right that the L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. Go, think you're cold, yeah. think you're cold. The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. Covering your face like cold, yeah. Still up in the ends, man still see me. Grimes he save, your man can't beat me. Bear man hate man, but still bring me. Pen up, dead up, man still easy. Cash my old thing, yeah, ton up, gang. Peng things come out and ton up for man. Done though. If man wanna clap, I'll clap, clap, clap. My pack don't jack. Yo, got me living better. Investors say busy, well I is the palm of my hand. The L, the O, the N, the G, the E, the R, the S. Come on, muddy, my muddy, my muddy, my muddy. The job of the blogger and the editor, fuck it, you move it, you go. Yes, I'm bilingual. I run the dam. Shout out my brother, he can't go to England because he's on a ban. I love my mother. Can't say the same about my dad. Every now and then, my sister sends my tunes and he says, You girl pun every corner. Lost man run a mile, just forget the nana. Step done, after then I said it's on If I catch a bitch, sleep if I'm his Gaza. Girl still a dead in a body armor. That's when anybody like Mr. Palmer. Leave girl hanging like Tommy Moore. You see the f-
DJ Longers, big shout out to join that to our hostess, aka moderator Jane McGregor. And like I said, we're back on the 4th of September. Saturday, the 4th of September, we're all female special. We're out of here until next month. See ya.